afternoon. Welcome to our continuous coverage of the NPP parliamentary primaries. Of course, this is where to stay, your election headquarters. 332, 31, 21 candidates working hard to represent various constituencies on the ticket of the NPP in the upcoming parliamentary uh, elections. One thing for sure you should look out for, there will be the fall of many giants and who are the aspirants who will be removing these giants? What dynamics will play in what constituencies? I mean, you have big constituencies. One key constituency you should look out for is the Dom Kwabinya constituency. Another is at the Antheasukwa because of Katie Hammond. What will be the impact on the NPP in the upcoming elections? These are issues we'll be delving into, plus the issues of vote buying and what have you. We are live on all our social media handles on Joy News, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and and X Spaces. It's on Joy News on TV. My personal handle is at the Nana Aisha. Of course, these are some of the names you should look out for in Greater Accra. The battle is between in in, in the Wager constituency. You have Tina Giftina, Ayele Mensa. There's Jerry Ahmed Shaib. Who are they? Then let me take you back to Dom Kwabinya constituency. It's a big constituency. It's one place you, you should look out for. And who is making the news there? Sarah Ajua Safo. She's the incumbent MP. You know all that has happened over the period. She's back. She's apologized. And she's asking many uh, people to vote her back to parliament. Michael Okwe Jr., on the other hand, has been in the background. Last time she, he contested, he did not win. But all this while, that that Joseph was away, he has been in the background. Uh, I mean, one would think that he's making a lot of impacts, but whether he will win the elections today, we'll be looking out for that. Uh, Setiopon Shila Adoma is a new name that is popping up. Now, look at the Ashanti region. Of course, you know it's the um, World Bank of the NPP, so definitely people are eager to represent uh, the MPP there. If you look at the Bantama constituency, uh, the Works and Housing Minister is the one who is making the news. I'll be taking you back to Bantama constituency and all the constituencies that will be making news today. But let's start from, yes, of course, the Bantama constituency, where some very interesting scenes are coming from there, where incumbent member of parliament, Francis Asensu Boache, and his major contender, Ralphie Japon, who is a brother of Kennedy Japon, are matching each other boot for boot on the voting ground. So this is what transpired. While exchanging pleasantries with the delegates, the incumbent MP Asenso Boache started a gospel song suggesting how he is destined for the second term. Just when he was about ending that song, his opponent, Ralph Japon, who stood close to him, then responds with his own rendition of the song, telling him he's destined for only one term, and that is what will happen today. This is exactly what transpired between the two. So I'll bring you more from the Bantama constituency. A lot of uh, stuff happening there, and our men are all scattered there. They'll be bringing us uh, what and what we need to know. Let's go to Adansia Sokwa. Of course, Katie Hammond, the Minister of Trade, who is battling it out with Samuel Dakwa Benfo. Uh, this morning, we're hearing of some scaffold on the voting ground. Uh, Katie Hammond himself is on the phone with us. Grateful for your time, Mr. Katie Hammond. Uh, this morning, what really happened? Uh, we are seeing videos of you and your contender in, in some sort of uh, confusion. In sort of confusion. Last night at about one o'clock, this, this imposter decided to organize tax, macho tax, to beat up my voice for absolutely no reason. And ask them to go and uh, take a recce exercise look around if there was no problem. They encountered people who were planting eggs, who were chanting, they were doing all sorts of things. They tried to find out what and all that's about. They go in there 
and then they they they, they lead mayhem. They, they just sprang up from the various buildings like uh, us, all sorts of uh, uh, guys masquerading uh, under the pseudonym of macho men and all sorts of uh, strong men, brutalizing my boys for absolutely no reason. When we were sitting up here and planning uh, how to go about our business today, that, that, uh, that reptile, he decides that he comes to Asoka to, 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 to try to threaten my boys. That is the problem. I have promised him I'm going to humiliate him at the post and then give him a bit of his life. He would have a test of what it takes to mess about with my boy. Uh, Mr. Hammond, have you reported this to the well, course, party executives? Uh, the discipline commander um, was acting. I called him. They came over and uh, the macho guys, they, they ran away. They came to their heels. I saw the single one around, um, uh, but um, as of today, it's peaceful at the, the, the ground. But there was absolutely no need for that. But uh, the eggs, and listen, I've asked my boys to dig up the eggs. We're going to boil them and eat. What is it? Camping? Uh, well, who is it frightening? I can't see how many is a guy to be frightened by all this nonsensical foolishness. Just, just I mean, listen. Look, I say to the credit of the NDC, we have battled out in the last 24 years here in Adansi, as a constituency. There hasn't been one instance of macho messing about in the Adansi, as a constituency. You have this foolish boy, this, uh, 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 this imposter, comes here to contest me and decides to beat up my boys. I've just seen my national organizer working here. Good afternoon, national organizer. That's your summit being for organizers, macho people, to beat my wife. He forgets that my name is Katie Hammond. He forgets that this is the independent republic. My mom is there. You want food? He will give me some, she will give me some food. Go in there. Yes, go on. All right, so that's Mr. Katie Hammond. Uh, he says that the national organizer just walked in and you heard him making a complaint. Mr. Katie Hammond, let me have you hold for just a moment and let's see what really transpired exactly when you were reporting to the police. I am going to ensure that he's mercilessly beaten to pop. I will humiliate him at the post and get him beaten. Currently, it's not Way up, no, no, that way I'm going to organize. I'm just putting you on notice. Oh, no, I will not disorganize anything oh, no. there. But get him wherever he is. He should leave town quickly. Oh, no, oh, no. Chief, you have two about 24, 20, 24 years in the economy. Come and see, aha. Macho boys. Remember the idea? Macho boys. 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 Some of them came to my house, my patch up, my job. Now my bubble, my job, whoa, bubble, whoa, free here. I'll poor like you. Over put me member. Mr. Commander, and I am going to give him a showdown. Two forms of showdown. I'll beat him here, I will humiliate him here, and then organize for him to be beaten physically. Thank you very much. I will be here. So, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. So, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. I know that. You've been the same. I know that. And after here, you will need each other. No, no, I've never needed him. He has never been part of this constituency. I'm going to have a cause of confusion. Last time I ran, he was actually disqualified. Now, some machinations are crazy as well to be. Or two years I put pa we just go and then you go and say and this golf fight now. They say they are they are they are they are yeah yeah. The baby is so they are mature. I've never needed him. I never needed my life. If I be him no, my hunda sasi so me no. Ba kuna dan ya tu ba kuno ne me hunda ba ko. And then I say you go appear me so me hunda ba ko. Me anu in my life. So he is not a cynic no in this constituency. Two or so. Me too. Me too. Now me would him say me a bad match. Now I will remember. Also, me too. A minister, not just a minister. Our cabinet minister. Cabinet for Christ's sake, does he know this? I'm coming. Now, Babu, remember. I'm. I'm going. I buy in channel. I hear politics. Out. Who the minister did? The agrabo. Who near the afu? I say. No, no. I, I am. But that's why you all here. Yes. And you see who the uniform is our rank. Okay, I have my ID. Yes. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. We have Babu no rank. I'm coming as a. 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 I
That was Katie Hammond uh, reporting the matter to the police. And uh, you, uh, the police have also been calming him down. Uh, he's been telling them that the, his contender has been beating up his boys and he says he would deal with him. But some strong words there Katie Hammond has been using. Uh, I think I, I have to apologize for the, the use of uh, some of the words on his contender. Katie Hammond is still with me. Mr. Katie Hammond, those were very strong words. Uh, you use are you going to withdraw them and actually focus on the issues that is how i feel he should behave himself i want him to leave us up instantly because he will regret his face if he messes about if i no question about if he hangs around around Africa. my territory my case i'm on my territory good afternoon Katie Amanda, I heard that you you were reporting the matter to the uh, national organizer who just no, no, walked no, no, in there. No, 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 what, what has been his response? It's my show. He has a show last night. It is my show now. It is my chef. He is just come to see my brother, younger brother. He came. Also come to know where we are needed. Know where we are needed. Rabbi, I need to go. I got things to go. Good afternoon. I'm grateful for your time. That's Katie Hammond. He is uh, the MP for Adanse. Aksukwa, and he's the trade minister. You heard how furious he was, and he's really, uh, it's heated in that constituency. He's made a formal complaint to the police. The police assured that they will deal with the matter. Let's hear from his contender, Benfo, who's been responding to this. Him. He says, if he sees you, he's going to beat you physically. And then at the end of this pose, he's going to win, which is also going to be another victory for him. How do you respond to that? As for he saying he's going to win this election, it's left for us to wait until 2 o'clock, or maybe thereafter, when the ballot has been counted. That one is, is left for that, that time. But he beating me up. I think it's just an honorable statement for an honorable member of parliament. It's, it's an honorable statement. It, it shouldn't come from an honorable member of parliament. To stand before the media, the full glare of everybody here, to claim that you're going to beat somebody mercilessly to the pop. Really? Is that the example he was giving it to us in parliament when he tried to hit an open prayer? An open prayer dodge. The blow didn't hit him. His blow never hit me. So you have the uh, Ben Four who is contending. Uh, he he is the main contender for Katie Hammond, and Katie he says that we shouldn't take what Katie Hammond is saying seriously because he is not making trouble. It's actually Katie Hammond who is making trouble. So we'll see how it all unfolds in the Adansia Sokwa constituency. But I told you that the Ashanti region in general is what. You should be watching uh, in the Bantama constituency. I mean, prior to this election, we've seen some, you know, exchange over there. We've seen uh, a uh, Kennedy Japan campaigning for his brother and all the issues that have been popping up. This morning, we saw the uh, MP himself singing and then he had a counter song from his contender uh, who is also Mr. Japan. So uh, our man himself is on the line Nanaya Jima will be telling us more, but I'm told that Asenso Boache is on Zoom. He's joined us. Mr. Asenso Boache, good morning. And how is the uh, voting going this morning in your constituency? Right. So we'll be trying to get Asenso Boache, who is the incumbent MP. But Nana. Uh, Yaojima is there for us. He's joined us. And Yaojima, very interesting things we've witnessed there this morning. Um, <laughs> that singathon between the two, I, I, I believe it didn't generate into any scaffold. Okay, Nana Yaobuachi, are you there? Hello, Nana Yao. Nana Obuachi, if you can hear me, I'm asking you to paint a picture of what exactly happened between the two MPs. I'm talking about Senso Obuachi, the incumbent MP, and the aspirant, uh, Ms. Obuachi. All right, so Nana Obuachi uh, is the one monitoring events for us. This morning, we're told that there's uh, there was some... Uh, 
you know, Sengathon, if you want to put it that way, between the incumbent MP and Raphael Ejapong, who is the aspiring, the aspiring um, candidate who wants to uh, lead the party into the parliamentary elections. Uh, on the ticket of the NPP. And so if we get Nanaya Obwache, he'll be telling us more on what really transpired there. But I'm saying that the, for the election today, there are some key constituencies you should look out for. One of them is Adanse Asokwa constituency. And uh, you heard there uh, Katie Hammond speaking to us on what really happened this morning. He's been telling us how he will not allow his contender, Samuel Benfo, to um, intimidate his boys. He says that he came to beat up. I mean, how one man beat up so many uh, boys, he's reported that to the police. The police, they've assured him that uh, they will work on it. So definitely, we we'll see how that goes. But definitely, if you look at this uh, parliamentary primary, this is how it's been over the period. Kwabunata uh, Hamon in the last uh, elections, uh, when the this is how it went for that constituency: two hundred and thirty-eight votes for uh, Katie Hammond, which represents fifty-six point nine four percent, and Samuel Binfo, who came up with one eighty uh, votes, representing forty-three point zero six percent. So, if you look at how this is, he is the incumbent MP, and you heard him talk about he's gone for elections for about twenty-four years. And so he is the master of the game. But this is a new person coming and already making this kind of votes. It's actually uh, a threat and which should get the MP worried. Uh, probably that's why he's really not taking chances. Uh, let's go back to Bantama, the Bantama constituency. The contest is between... Uh, Francis Asenso Boache and Raphael E. Japon. This morning we are told that there, there were some scenes there at the voting ground. Nanao Boache has joined us. Uh, Nanao, paint a picture of what really happened this morning. There seemed to be a problem with Nanao's um, line. Let's try and fix it and get him back to tell us what exactly happened. In the studio, I've been joined by um, <laughs> uh You know Asamwabwati, he was former MP for Infantiman constituency. Uh, he's currently the Minister for Chiefs and Religious Affairs. Grateful to have you here, uh, Mr. Asamwabwati. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, already uh, voting has started and already we are seeing so many uh, things happening and, and of course we are not surprised because those are the consequences that we were looking forward to seeing some showdown and definitely we were not disappointed the showdown uh, has started but so far how would you describe the exercise? Um, thank you very much um, Aisha, thank you and um, thank you to the um, listeners and viewers um, I just arrived from um, Infantiman, actually. Okay, um, you went to I went to vote. Vote, okay. Yes. Oh, nice. I went to vote for uh, nice. my candidate. Who did you vote for? Oh, for the incumbent <laughs> MP. Okay. Ophelia Mensah Hayford. Oh, um, all right. Uh, you know who I am. I'm a strong believer in women empowerment, actually. That's true. Um, my mom, a hard woman, brought me up when I served Margaret Thatcher Prime Minister. <laughs> That's when true. When you have a strong woman, who know what they want? Follow them. Her seat, actually, <laughs> is not one of the, the seats that is shaking. I think she is actually well, strong she, there. Well, she, she's consolidated it. Um, actually won more votes than the partner the husband did okay. in 2016 okay. and so we are hoping that she would uh, go back to back with these ways um, so I went to support her you, um, you think that woman is a woman factor playing yes, a, woman a role factor. it's a woman factor okay uh, we need to we need to promote our, our young ladies and sisters and young girls who and politics has become men uh, male dominated mm. sometimes women shy away from it so yeah. when I see a, a strong woman in there, I will go for it. Mm. Um, but apart from that, she's also a strong, world-determined lady. Um, first time MP, she's done an awful lot of development, um, championing areas that people thought no, no development had gone there. 
I tried to reach every community when I was there, but I served only one term, don't forget. Mm -hmm. And so serving this next one after her late husband, mm -hmm. she's consolidated that, so she suspended. Um, but don't forget, I was a, I was a minister yeah. when I served one term. She's the backbencher, mm. so comparatively, she's done well. Okay. And so she's competent and she's a very eloquent woman and reach out to the people. She's a woman, she brings everybody on board. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, like my part, when I was ending, it was like okay. everybody wanted it, so it was a division, but yeah. she's bringing them together, which mm. is one of the reasons why I supported her. Mm. Um, the other two are my colleagues and my friends. In fact, one, Amwa is uh, former first vice chairman. Mm. I mean, I know him very well. He was part of my campaign. Mm. And Corsa Brown, too, has been around. So, um, whoever wins, but I know Ophelia will win. I, win. So. I saw the ground. <laughs> and in politics, you look at the body language and um, you also touch base. So, before you go there, you talk. Okay. And I think um, it definitely I'm on the winning looks team. like you're on the winning team. But, okay. but, but I've, I've been listening to uh, other areas. Um, obviously, my ears are everywhere. Yeah. Um, this is crucial for the MPP. It's how we go through this peacefully and come out as a united group, um, mm. again, at the constituency level. The election of 2024, December this year, uh, will be more of a, what I call a, 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 a combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat okay. between us and the NDC. you got to go down. You can't stay up here. Um, it's constituency battlefield. So you need to look at what constituency, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and begin to utilize your strengths. Mm. And, and so listening, I'm, I'm happy it's been cool everywhere. Mm. We're just about, what, about an hour and a half away from closing, mm. and I haven't picked up any serious... In, in, in Adansia Sokwa already, your, your colleague Katie Hammond has been fighting his contender, uh, uh, being for some or being for, he says yes. that... He beat his boys to pulp, and he's actually reported the issue to the police. You've well, he, not he heard that. Did. I, yeah, don't think he I mean, he did it personally. Whether but, it was his boys or, okay. but he's actually accusing him. Okay, I haven't picked up that signal, but there was a problem, a skirmish is there um, during the vetting and all that. But I thought they've overcome that. Um, I think Katie would handle that with care. Just a minute, just a minute after you, I mean, before you came here, I, I was speaking with Katie Hammond, and he's still, his temper is so high, high, and he feels that the, his contender must be brought to book, and he says he will handle him himself. But this is not healthy for the contest. Um, uh, Katie sometimes, um, you know, will say things that it's it's a it's, it's a very it's emotional. You, you know, Katie. Yeah. Katie would say it, but he doesn't mean to harm me. It, the contest has been a bit of heated from the, the betting time. Yeah. There are some few areas where the part, uh, he thought the party should have taken firm stance. Uh, the party also thought, look, let's all let go through, go and beat him. If you can beat him, go and beat him. <laughs> um, so it's, it's like an open field. They thought we've betrayed him in a way. Um, but Katie is a, is a fighter, is a politician. He gets, uh, he, he fights with his hat on his sleeves. You know that, that's mm. what I mean. Mm. Um, but I believe it will calm down. Um, and that's the only place I've heard skirmishes. The other skirmishes where you, we thought uh, my happen was the Bank one, where yeah. the showdown, the showdown, the showdown has my, already... his brother is, um, <laughs> is threatening to show down my, my young man, um, friend and brother. I, I, said, so so I believe Asensu would win at, at the end of the day. I believe he would win. You believe I've, I've, so? All I've been touching base with the, every people on the ground. It's not going to be I've that simple. I've been a local simple. government minister, you know. Okay. And I know the ground. <laughs> Don't forget, I've also gone through a national chairmanship campaign okay. and attached base. Okay. So I've got people everywhere that I talk to. Mm. Um, but but it will be tough. He may win. Ooh, ooh, yes, he, oh, yes. he may win, but it won't be ooh, easy yes, for he him. Will give a, a run for his money. Um, don't forget that the whole of uh, uh, Kennedy of uh, Japan <laughs> is there. Um, Kennedy is my brother. He's also one of the fighters we got. And so that area is an isolated incident, but it makes them stronger. It, it energizes the party. Mm. It, so long as it doesn't end up in the uh, handcuffs. Oh, handcuffs. Yeah. What, what, what yeah. is it? Yeah, 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 handcuffs, yes. yes. And, That's and, it. and doesn't end up in a serious fight or argument or insult. Um, a contest brings sometimes the worst of people, if you don't know. Yeah. We hope it will just end up in a cool uh, um, state and they will to be friends again. Okay. Um, they, they talk, but somehow when they go to the public domain, it's like it flares up. But Banta must seem like um, a, a big deal for the NPP. It is a big deal. Bantama, if you know the history of since the Fourth Republican Administration, Bantama is a hot cake 
for the MPP, that's where we used to get our maximum votes from. I remember 2000 election, I was um, helping Dan Butcher, who was the general secretary in the party headquarters, collating the results. And I remember Bantema came and they knocked off about two regions. <laughs> Just one constituency. Just one constituency. They knocked two regions off. Okay. Um, I also quite remember an incident where we had Ketu South come in. And um, no, no, Ketu South didn't come in. And Bantema had not come in. So I had to make a strategic decision mm -hmm. um, from my end. What do we do? Which one do we announce first? Because we had our results earlier than even the electoral commissioner. Okay, yeah. Uh, before I, I, I Okay. And so I decide where uh, to t give to uh, the general secretary to take it to the strong room and which one we are. So we kept Bantama to our chest for a while. Mm. And when Bantama came, knocked everybody off. You knocked everybody off. So we don't joke with Bantama. <laughs> I remember during the even the um, appointment session, I, I had the privilege of talking to President J. Kufo, mm. who was the president elect. And I said, Mr. President, don't forget Bantima. At least Anani should get something. Okay. <laughs> but the most he pulled. So we don't joke with Bantima. Bantima. Do, 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 yeah, but, but uh, uh, the one question that many will ask is, if you don't joke with Bantama and you really know the guy to pull the votes for you, why give him a contest? I'll come back to that. Let me bring in Nanayao Bwachi Yadom, who is in the Adanse Asokwa, where there's a showdown this morning. You have the MP, very furious, use some printable words on his contender. Nana Bwachi Yadom, um, what really transpired? this morning were you there when it happened I sir, I was here when everything did happen in the morning um, as furious as he was the member of parliament the incumbent member of parliament Casey Hammond entered the voting center making noise alleging that the opponent the main contender Samir Ben Fodafa had brought in some truth to attack his voice well the allegations were quite severe to the extent that the police had to intervene to calm his nerves. But then um, the Honorable Member decided not to even take the advice the police were offering to him. And at the point in time, he did say that this is an ultimate election, hence the need for him not to uh, feel reluctant or put on the bars of being a minister um, to do so cool. But then he has to uh, be quite aggressive to the matter because his voice has been beaten up. Uh, so the, the whole scene here at Adantia Sopa has been turned since morning. Well, voting has to start at exactly 7 a.m. But because there were issues with the album which were earlier raised by some opponents of Mr. K.P. Amad, the party had to put the election on hold and so they did not start their election at exactly 7 a.m. just as other constituencies did. Adantia Sopa did start their election at exactly 9.30 a.m. And then some few minutes after the election did start, that is when the incumbent member of parliament, KP Hammond, alongside party executives and the district chief executive, did come in to accuse the head main opponent, Sami Ben Fodak, of bringing in troops to attack their supporters. And so that was the case from the end of uh, Mr. KP Hammond. We also did speak to Sami Ben Fodak about the allegations that uh, Mr. KP Hammond leveled against him. Well, he yeah. says that the allegations, the, the frustration that we could see on the face of the incumbent member of parliament is a sign of, of, of somebody who is at the verge of losing his seat. And so for him, KP Hammond is not going to get through this process successful. But he says he has some, some, some clarity he would want to make with regards to some of the issues that um, the Honorable KP Hammond did raise against him. So right here with me is Sami Ben Fodafar. Well, you didn't hear Kitty Amon make such allegations. How do you respond to that? I just saw, saw it on the screen when he was making those allegations. I wasn't there. Um, when I came here, that, uh, my attention was drawn to the fact that he's made several allegations and uh, issued threats here and there. I mean, um, it's been so. It's been so from day one. You see? He behaves as if the seat of Alantia Square is his best right. It's as though that he came from his mother's room with a seat. Therefore, nobody should ever even come close to the seat. But that's not the case. If he started with, let's find ways of just disqualify him from the region with baseless, baseless allegations, baseless petitions, wasting my time, wasting my resources, everybody's time. When the leaders of the party have decided, no, let's go ahead with the, with the, with the process, then you go to the back door and seek opportunity to, to, to change the carbon that we're using to, 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 to cut his vote. To change names. To change votes. Why? What is this to give for? If you know you have done so well for the past 24 years, why are you afraid of this contest? 
Why? What's the issue? And today, what, what is the issue? That uh, somebody has beaten somebody and that, blah, 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 blah. Therefore, you're going to beat me to the pub. Really? My, my quickest response is that I think that parliament should have the process of assessing the mentality of the members of parliament. The last time I was talking, you were just going to hit another prayer in the house of parliament. Which is against the dictates and the step orders of parliament. Why, why, why should a member of parliament throw his hand in the, in the, in the fourth parliament? I'm not going to pay hard to dodge. What that does you have, you have this hitting with, with, with a blow? What, 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 what are you seeking for? Are we okay? You see a clear sign of desperation, somebody who's just losing an election. Someone who, who's just at the verge of just losing everything. And you, by now, 24 good years. Ah, I think you are studio. When I was monitoring, I saw uh, Anova Sabi in your studio. He has been member of parliament before. When he left parliament, does it mean that he has not become relevant to the party? It's not something left to do with his life. Life is not about parliament. So what, why is this man behaving as though this Adanjas question belongs to him and his mother's dead right? I don't know this person. I don't, he doesn't even need to know me before I become a member of parliament. I become a member of NPT. Who does he know? If, 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 if he doesn't know me, what difference does he make? Let us wait and count the vote and let it happen. The last time people came around to save his life, this time is not going to happen. And the issue, the trailer issue to me, I'm going to be able to report it. That me, I should not leave town. He doesn't come from here, he's in fancy. He should rather go to fancy. What are you talking about? All right, thank you so much. So, Aisha, that is the uh, uh, main contender of Honorable KC Hammond, Samir Ben Fodakwa. He said, uh, for him, he is going to report the issue, the threat uh, that KC Hammond leveled against him. He's going to report it to the police. And so, we are still monitoring the situation. We are expecting voting to end at exactly 2 p.m. And then whether or not, whether there will be a showdown or there will not be a showdown, we'll bring you up to speed details of everything that goes on here at Adanse Asoka. But then um, delegates are in casting their votes. Voting started um, at exactly 9 a.m. and is expected to end at 2 p.m. I already told you that issues with the album is the main reason why the voting, uh, voting for Adanse Asoka had to uh, be on hold or had to delay. And so this is the main situation on ground here at the Adanse Asoka constituency. We, we saw Katie Hammond um, vehemently, uh, you know, telling the police that his men have been attacked. Has there been any arrests so far? Well, Aisha, there have not been any oh, yeah, of arrests. Um, Katie Hammond did bring guys, some four guys who claimed to be by the, the, the men of Aisha put that up. But uh, you know, it's a process. And then the police would have to do their, their own investigation as to, the, as to what really did happen, um, as to whether or not the boys who came in uh, to allegedly beat the men of KT Hammond are truly uh, boys from the side of Sami Pimpo Dapa, and whether or not anything of that sort even happened in the first place. So the, poli the police would have to uh, begin their own investigations to the matter. That is the main reason why they had to calm uh, Mr. KT Hammond down. Nana Boache Yadom with that report from Adansia Sokwa. But uh, Asabi, I mean, he is now using you as a reference point. You heard the Samuel Bainfo uh, talking about why Katie Hammond should rest because he's been there for too long. But, but aside what he's saying, there's been some conversations going on that Katie Hammond is actually showing too much that he's actually threatened by his contender. Again, as his constituents have been, uh, you know, accusing him of one thing or the other leading up to the, this primaries, it, it, it does make, it makes the, it, it muddies the water for him. Um, I, I, will, I will call for calm in, in Katie, in Adansia uh, Let me use that. No, okay. Katie has been around for long. I've known Katie from campus time. We, we fought um, even military government. We, we were in exile together. We, we formed them. In fact, we were the founding fathers of the party in, in, in exile mm. before they lifted ban in, in politics in Ghana. So Katie has this passionate, that's him. As I say, he wears his, his hat on his sleeves. Mm. And he's one of the passionate politicians I've seen. Uh, very honest, but very passionate. Um, sometimes you mistake his passionate to be aggression. It's not the case. It, uh, and I like his, his, his enthusiasm to bring people together. That's a, that's, a, that's a very heated contest you can hear from his contender. Mm -hmm. um, he believes that, look, you've come in, obviously, lately, 
um, and he's been around. So, 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 bid your time and let me go nicely. Of course, he's a challenger. He wants, he wants to come in. So it's a serious contest going on there. But I'll call for calm. Um, whoever wins, we would have to work together as a team. Um, but I believe K2 will win. I mean, I know the contender. I've met him just a few times, but I couldn't recognize him as I, I looked at his face. But he's, he's obviously also passionate. Look, mm. the way he's speaking, he can rally people behind. Yeah. Why the two of them? You, you notice what's happening. There is just some argument going on. We haven't had a proof of anybody beating. Yeah. The police have not picked up anybody. So it's allegations for now. So I want to calm them down, tell them to calm down. Whoever wins will pick them up and bring them together. So they should just calm down. But I, I, I am on the side of Katie. Now what I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because the minister I started life with him on campus. And he, those of us who started, especially under the PNDC, we, we have a way of, of passionately arguing our case. Those days, there was no position or any reward for it. You could have even been killed. So we believe somehow that, look, let me, let me state a case and you wait. So some delay in moving our other stay. I, 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 when I lost, I, I just moved out. You, you don't I haven't moved out completely. I still go there and help out. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I'm not in the front edge of the constituency. But without me, the constituency also may not move. So it, you've got to find a balance. Mm -hmm. So you're not out if you are not more, more MP. You, but you, I believe he, he wants to serve his last step. You, you, don't believe, you, you don't believe in leaving when the applause is high or when the applause is fading? He has more to give. He I've, 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 I've still has more Let to give. Let me tell you, I've discussed with, this with him. The last time he had another contest, and, and it, almost similar, but not as heated as this one. So some of us will talk privately. I said, Kitty, me, I'm, I'm at this age, you need to calm down let's, and, and rest. Let's pull and rest and take your time. He says, no, I've got to And it's true. If you look at the number of people leaving parliament this time, um, senior politicians, senior seasoned ones, uh, we will be depleted if we are not careful. And yeah, they'll say Chairman Sabunsu, the Joe Wise, Nambuchi, Atachia, all of them and are so leaving. And so Katie thought about it and said, let me go and, and hold the fort. And I agreed with him. And so it's an individual decision. I agree with him to go for the contest, but he should calm down. His contender should calm down. Whatever we we will back them. But I believe Katie will put. I, I will take you back to Bantama on that question. Why you think that Asensu Boati is the man to do the trick for the NPP to break the eight? And you're still giving him a contest. But let me come back to Accra and go back to Kumasi. In the greater Accra uh, region, the regional secretary of the NPP, Daniel Nilai Paka, has refuted claims by one of the aspirants in the Ablekuma West constituency primary, Robert Kwesini, called that his opponent, Eslo Usu, is camping delegates contrary to the party's directives. Mr. Nicole made the allegations insisting his opponent's were being denied access to accreditation due to the campaign. But reacting to his claims, the Greater Accra Regional Secretary of the party, Daniel Parker, described the allegations as baseless. One of the contenders here at the Ablekuma West constituency, Ronnie, is here. He is raising concerns about a scheme to deny his supporters uh, to cast their, their votes. Tell us, what is happening here? Most of my supporters have been denied accreditation. We don't even know where the accreditation are. And look, look what's happening. All these people don't have accreditation to go inside. Now, I was told there will be nobody allowed inside. I'm seeing protocol officers here, P people with protocol tags. Where, where's these tags coming from? They are just using intimidation tactics against my supporters. So you mean all the guys here are your supporters? Sule, you can interview him. He's a, he's, Sule, he doesn't have accreditation. So what's going on? Why are they denying? Apparently the coordinators are sabotaging accreditations. And they're only giving it to perceived supporters of my opponents. Have you raised this concern with the party officials? Or what have they been telling you? Ask him. He's the one standing over there. Parker, he's the one in charge. Ask him where he is. Tell him that why isn't the coordinators bringing all the accreditation on this table for us to verify the album? Even the album should be outside. Why is the album inside? And I, I, I don't want to respond, but then because of my position and I am being the regional representative, I have to respond of this fabrication and lies. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, for instance, I met uh, all the aspirants, I met the uh, constituency executive, and I gave a warning that there should be no campaign. If you are making big allegations like this, I'm expecting that you support your allegation with evidence. If someone is talking about camping, 
The question is, where are they being camped? They are being camped at Christian Home. Walk, walk five minutes from here, you see them all there, here, Christian Home. Well, Christian and people have observer tag and we agree there will be no observer tags. So how did Wabiola, a former organizer, get an observer tag? Uh, senior, I'm the one in charge and there is no discussion that has been made that there should be observer tag. We have people who are party officers that may come here. And for that matter, if they want to observe, you can prevent them. And that is why you see some few former officers coming to observe. So he doesn't have a case at all. He's talking about Christian home that people are being come there. Christian home is our meeting grounds. That is where we do meet. He is a candidate. Nobody will stop him from going there. If he feels he's camping, camping usually is explained that some people being kept in an hotel or so. This is not the situation. So this is Ablekuma West. Eslo Wusu is the incumbent MP. And you have there uh, Kwesi Nicole, who says he plans to petition the party hierarchy. Now, uh, our man is there, Carlos Caloni. He's been monitoring uh, stuff for us. Uh, Carlos, uh, tell me more about the Ablekuma West constituency. I mean, has this issue been resolved? Uh, I can say for a fact that this issue has not been resolved. As we speak, uh, there are scores of uh, supporters of Nicole who are still uh, making claims that they've not been able to be accredited to duly uh, cast their vote here. And so tension is still here. Uh, but if you come to the inner perimeter it's uh, where i'm standing the process appears to be uh, very okay uh, so far the electoral officer uh, told us uh, that about 900 people have been able to cast their ballot as at 11:55 a.m and so he's hoping that by 2 p.m a uh, significant number of the people or the delegate would have cast their ballot here so a peaceful uh, security presence here is high uh, i mean be, before you even get to the center there are barricades on the road uh, to ensure that motorbikes do not get to the center so largely it's peaceful but the supporters of nicole are still raising this concerns aisha so, uh, so the issue of accreditation has not been resolved. Have you cited the incumbent MPS Lousso herself? Have you had any conversation with her to respond to some of these issues being raised? Exactly. I've had some conversations with Esla also when she got to the ground. And she actually refuted those allegations, insisting uh, that um, the uh, arrangement here is being strictly followed by uh, what the party has established already. And so the claims of she campaign some delegates uh, uh, is not true. And she believes that probably because uh, her contender sees uh, the fact that he's likely to lose, uh, that's why maybe he's raising these concerns. And so uh, from her point of view, all the delegates are getting accreditation, but that exactly what Nicole has been saying, that the accreditation is killed in a certain way, that uh, the delegates uh, that are supporting Esla are getting the accreditation, but those supporting him are not getting the accreditation. And so these are the, um, uh, the views from Esla as well as uh, from Nicole. So as, as we stand here, Outside there, there are some supporters of Nicole who are still agitating to get their accreditation. Earlier, we also visited the school where the claim was made that Esla was actually a campaign, uh, uh, some delegate, uh, but some uh, supporters of Esla would not allow us to uh, go into that premises, even though we saw a number of delegates there. But we cannot actually uh, ascertain if indeed these delegates have been camped there or not. But that is the picture from the Ablekuma West constituency, Aisha. Oskaloni is a, a correspondent in the, uh, in the Ablekuma West constituency. Uh, Asabi, how, how does it come across to you that before going into this contest, it was made clear, your general secretary uh, laid down the rules, no camping, no campaigning on that day and all of that. And you're hearing all of this, I mean, we are just how many hours into the voting? 
But if I heard him right, over 900 people have voted. So I don't know the number of um, uh, uh, delegates uh, delegates voting. Mm. Shouldn't be more than maybe 1,200. Mm. Those are the maximum mm. uh, numbers we have in the most constituents, the bigger ones. So they're almost through. Mm. And so I don't understand where they're talking about some have not been allowed in. Maybe. And the, the regional secretary is there. That is my uh, my consolation that he will see to the, the, the rules being adhered to. Um, but if I heard him right, there are different between supporters and delegates. I think you're getting confused about supporters and delegates. Delegates, when they get in, they are on the, um, uh, what do you call it, the album. And they are easily allowed. If he's a delegate and he's a polling station executive and who is a delegate, they're allowed in. Um, if they're not been allowed in, then they should call the uh, election committee members who are at hand and they would, uh, they would let them in. But these are different from supporters. If you come to support somebody and you want accreditation to go in, they can refuse you because you're not voting. So there will be a limit or there will be a, a barrier where you, can, you cannot go beyond. So uh, uh, the, Nicole, who is also a friend of mine, um, uh, he was at STC, I think, when uh, <laughs> I was at Singapore, so he was okay. a deputy. He looks he was, frustrated, actually. I know he is, but um, he should also calm down. The difference between supporters and delegates. If he's complaining about the album and delegates, then let the regional sec secretary who is there sort it out. Because once you're on the album, you'll get through. I went to vote, but, but there was no problem. And when I went, those who were delegates had queued up. And there were supporters who were not delegates who were shouting and screaming. So they are different. You can prevent them from coming to the inner perimeter. Mm. But as for the delegate, they will be allowed. Mm. And with 900 voted, as at what, 11 o'clock, it's almost one. And I believe that's about an hour and a half since the, the nine, 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 900 were mentioned. All of them would have voted. All of them may have voted by now. Mm. I think it's all to do about nothing. Not, it's, it's like a, a, a storm in a teacup. And so people are just agitated. Elections are not easy. When you go for a contest, you are tensed, you are agitated, you are apprehensive. You, 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 but why so? If you know you've normal. done your job, it's, you, you, you've it's done a, your campaign, you know you have some loyal followers, why should you be worried? But you can never be sure about election until the last ballot paper is counted. <laughs> fear delegate. Ah, <laughs> well, fear yourself too. <laughs> you, you must also open up to people so you can trust them. Yeah. Uh, but in elections, it's difficult. Mm. Um, people will look at you, smile, but then they vote against you. you <laughs> so, That's very sad. <laughs> let, let me bring in Rafiq Salam, who is monitoring events for us uh, in Upper West. He is currently at the Sisala East uh, constituency. Uh, Rafiq, how is go, uh, the voting going so far? I mean, um, what can you report from there? Voting in the Sesala East uh, constituency is going on uh, well. Uh, uh, not, uh, we don't have uh, uh, many hitches uh, as uh, somewhere or some parts uh, in the country. We are expecting a total of 529 uh, delegates to cast uh, their ballots. And also, we are also told uh, from the EC that uh, four persons uh, will be able to vote because uh, they have uh, passed on. And as I speak to you uh, now, more than 50% of the voters have so far uh, cast their uh, ballots uh, in Tumu. Rafiq Salam, uh, we've witnessed some hitches in some areas. Uh, you are saying that in the Sisala East constituency, there's nothing of that sort. Everything is going on smoothly. But have you cited some of the uh, aspirants? Who, have they come to vote? Have you had any conversation with them? Um, yeah, um, I spoke to uh, both candidates and the person of a deputy minister for sanitation and water resources, Ami Duchine Isaku. And also the Fort Fabio Olekra uh, from the political science department of the University of Ghana, Dr. Joshua Jepuntier Zato. Uh, both of them are in high spirit and uh, they think that they will carry uh, the day. I spoke to them, they said they haven't gotten any challenges regarding the process so far, and they think that the process, process is moving on uh, as smoothly uh, in the constituency. And they are really happy, and then they are only hoping and praying that two o'clock to knock uh, early uh, for them to be declared a winner. But Rafiq. here in that post region, hello? Go ahead, Rafiq. But uh, there are other two uh, constituencies where popular acclamation is taking place uh, in the upper West region. One is the Nandam uh, constituency, where the constituency popular acclaim Ambrose there, interior minister, 
as the candidate for the party in the 2024 uh, polls. Uh, so speaking to the delegates after he was popular acclaiming, he, acclaimed, he paid glory to the founding fathers of the party and also the Catholic Church for what they have done uh, for the people of Nandom. But he came out beneath his sleep with an, a shocking statement saying that come 2028, he will bow out and he will not put his name on the ballot paper again for the Nandam uh, constituency. And also in the Lambo State constituency, uh, Dr. Yolviel uh, Baligi is also going on the post in the Lambo State constituency. Rafik Salam, thanks so much for the update from Sisala East. Let me take you to one of the controversial constituencies, Dom Kwabenya, here in Accra. Some female delegates are strongly kicking against the candidature of the incumbent MP Sarah Joa Safo, insisting she has neglected the constituency and must not be given the nod again. They are, however, throwing their support behind Michael Okwe Jr. By the way, he is the son of the former Speaker of Parliament. For the past 12 years, we live. I want to go to the hospital. 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 I want to go to the My colleague Samuel Mbura is in that constituency. He joins us. Mbura, uh, tell me, have you cited both aspirants, Ajoa Safo and Michael Kwe Jr.? I'm not talking about Sheila because I know the contest is between these two. Well, as of now, it is uncertain how the outcome will be, Aisha. Being on the grounds, uh, we, we don't... We, we, it is not quite certain from what the delegates um, are telling us and per their behavior here. So right now you can't, you can't pontificate that um, this aspirant is more likely to win. So uh, it is quite an uncertain situation. But what I can say is that um, all three aspirants are here. The first to have come here was um, uh, Sheila Oponsechi. She was the first person. When I arrived here at about uh, 6.40 to 7 o'clock, she was already seated here with her, her team, engaging the delegates, uh, exchanging pleasantries with them. The second to arrive was uh, Madam um, Sarah Adjuasa for the incumbent MP. Uh, she also arrived with her team and then gave the delegates some breakfast. That was rice porridge uh, with bread and had some 
brief conversation with her, her team as well. But I must say the, the, the welcome from the delegates was not that encouraging. Some would have, someone would have expected that at least as an incumbent or a sitting MP, uh, should have had a rousing welcome from the delegates, but uh, from the demeanor of the delegates, they were somehow withdrawn in their actions whilst she rather tried to engage them and all that. And the, the last person to arrive at the um, venue here was uh, Michael Quay Jr., uh, who is contesting this election for the third time. He lost about eight votes to Sarah Joseph in the, uh, the last elections. and. Right now, he's optimistic that he's going to win the election because the last time the campaign propaganda that was used against him was that he was in India. We know he, he, he was the Ghana ambassador to India, so the propaganda used against him was that he wasn't in the country and uh, because of that, he is not in touch with the people. So for that matter, they shouldn't vote for him. But now he says that he's back in Accra, he's back in Ghana working as the CEO of the Free Zones Authority and for that matter she has been able to go back to the drawing board and then correct um, the wrongs. Uh, we can listen to that interview that he granted me um, responding to the causes of his loss uh, in the previous election and other matters so far as this uh, election is concerned. All right, we'll try and get that and play that interview. But again, uh, have you spoken with Ajua Safo? Hello, Mbura. Well, when Sarah Ajua Safo arrived, I made several attempts to talk to her. Yeah, can you hear me, Asha? Asha, can you hear me? Mbura, go on. You're on air. We can hear you. Well, right, so when, when Sarah Joseph arrived, I actually made the first attempt and then followed her several times to hear from her, at least a word to our viewers and the delegates, but she declined to talk to us. She initially promised that after casting her ballot, she would talk to us, but after casting the ballot, she had a brief conversation with her team, and since then, she had not even made that attempt to talk to uh, uh, the media. But if you look at her body demeanor and posturing so far, you could feel that she's somehow not settled yet. You could see that she's somehow agitated within her. Uh, there's some level of tension within her because the atmosphere here is quite uh, un uncertain. You can see the delegates sitting there quietly waiting for their turn to go and cast their ballot. But we don't know who they are going to uh, vote for. And no one can claim at the moment the three aspirants that, okay, maybe it is going in my favor or it is going against this particular person. So far, about a thousand of them, I'm told, have cast their ballots. Uh, if you recall the previous election, they were a little uh, over 900, but the number has increased double as a result of the creation of new polling stations in Domi Kobia, um, which has actually shot the number to that uh, that that level. So, um, for now, Sarah Joseph wouldn't talk to us on record. Uh, Madame Sheila Opon Sechi wouldn't also talk to us. They are waiting patiently uh, to um, witness the entire election process. Perhaps when the elections are declared, that is where they'll be talking to the media. We are also picking information of some sharing of money, with the list being 5,000. Have you also uh, picked up something on this? Well, I, for the moment, I have not had um, any information or any intelligence to that effect. I actually did my background checks here. I spoke to some of the delegates. I also did some behind the doors checking. And then what I can tell you is that I've not laid hands on ev any evidence of that uh, nature. But in your short, that is uh, Michael um, Aaron Okwe Jr., uh, the fierce contender to address her for engaging the, the, the delegates. Uh, Honorable, just briefly on Joy News, uh, would you want to share a word with us on Joy News? What would you have to tell us? Um, your life on the life the cast. What do you have to say so far as this election is concerned? Talk to my delegates. No, but at least talk to your outside viewers and the party supporters watching us on Joy News. How are the prospects like for you in this election? I don't know. Ask the delegates, madam. How are the prospects like in this? I'll talk to the delegates. Ask. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. It's just what the delegate is saying. You have done your own work. What do you have to say? She's only a single person. They are voting. Ask them. 
that's a single delegate. Are you optimistic of winning? I have spoken to them already, but I want to hear from you. So ask them, ask the delegates. So ask them. Are you are a delegate. Yes. You are here to vote for him? Yeah. Why do you think he's the best person? He is the best candidate for the job. Yeah. What makes you think he's the best person? I know him. He's the grassroots man. He's a grassroots man. Yep. Okay, let me just talk to other people. Yes. 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 Let me hear from you, sir. What, what, do, you, do you agree with her assertion? Yeah, yeah, they are ready. Do you agree with her assertion that he should be the candidate to lead the party? Yes, yes. yes. What makes you think so? Oh, she's good. That he will get everything. So he's a good man. This is a few of the delegates uh, endorsing the candidature, but there's another tent over there. I wish we could have the opportunity to go there. But let, let me just take the final word from you. Your, your people are watching you on the Joy News channel. We know we are live and colored everywhere. What is the message from Michael Okwe Jr.? So far as this election is concerned, you are going in for the third time, right? Yes, uh, my message is that the elections are going well. People are voting. Um, last time, they had the... Um, No, no, we, are, we are listening. We are listening. I just want to make sure they don't. This stampede. Let, we can make progress. We are, we are okay. Um, we are okay. We are okay. Everybody are okay. Your people are watching you. What do you have to tell them? Last time, uh, delegates were here. The delegates were in the sun. They were suffering. So this time, I personally provided canopies and chairs for the delegates so that they can sit down and be away from the sun so i was making a very funny side joke that my colleague candidates who did not provide the canopies and the chairs they can shake them in the sun but they shouldn't come and shake them with the seats and the canopy but that's just by the way it's just a joke so <laughs> what is your message to Ghanaians then so far as this election is concerned the last time you lost by eight votes to sarah Juasafu. What is the trick that will work for you this time round? Oh, you asked me this question in the morning. I forgot it. Uh, and I answered you that. Then I was in India and she was in Ghana. Now I'm in Ghana and she was in America. So we'll see what happens. What is your projection, your win projection? My projection is the count. So when they count, I'll know the projection at that time. Is Ajuasa for giving you a headache? Oh, I mean... I don't have a headache, so I don't know who can give me a headache. I don't have any headache at all. You think she's competent? She has done well for the people of Dumkov. You know that uh, Adwa is my sister in the party. I can't say anything bad about her outside. But when I meet my delegates at home, and we say, come on, you don't wash your dirty linen in public. So whatever the issue is with Adwa, I'll say it to the delegates and it stays there. The last time we had that interview, you told me that uh, there's some level of anger and anguish within the party and the delegates will speak for it today. Yes. Taking into consideration that at a point she absconded her parliamentary duties and your people were not happy, the minority had to shield her and all that. You think that is going to manifest today? I cannot comment on those details. As I said, those are general statements, no details to come from me. So you are optimistic of a win? Well, I pray to God that uh, I find favor with the delegates. I've served them. I've been there for them all this time. When even the MP wasn't there, I was the one doing everything with them. So I pray that when they get to the booth, they also have favor with me and also vote for me to lead them so they can see what I can do for the constituency. When I came, I heard them mentioning a particular name. That indicates that you, you are more than less a grassroots man. And even your manifesto that you have provided, you say you are the grassroots man. Why, how, is it the case that you are the homeboy in Domi Kobia? Well, I've been living in Domi Kobia since 1981. So, I mean, I've been playing football in Hacho. I was a number six. I was known to uh, play Buga a lot. You know, so I've lived with the people. So they know me and they know I am. I'm real. If I'm upset, I'm upset. If I'm happy, I'm happy. If there is a mistake, after all, even your own child can make a mistake and you forgive them if you love them. So we work together and we see what happens in future. All right, but um, have you had intelligence that perhaps your contenders are trying to induce these delegates to vote against you? No, no. I haven't. Is there something going on like that? Because I want to go and report them. Is anything like that going on?
I'm asking for maybe your team is gathering some intelligence. No, 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 nothing like that. You are not also doing say everything is free. Are you not giving transport? No, 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 no. You're not giving breakfast or lunch? No, I'm giving them tents and chairs. No lunch? No lunch, no transport. Maybe because the election is changing at two. So if by the grace of God I win, I invite all the delegates to come to my house for super lunch. Super lunch. Yes. That's the expectation. Yes, super lunch and bubra. Bubra. Yes. Uh, are your contenders also doing the same, maybe oh, giving some lunch I or something? I've not got that intelligence You don't yet. know about that? Yes. I see. But even me, when I lost last time, I gave them fufu and bubra. So imagine if I win. I always want to take care of the delegates because at the end of the day, they are the people who make the party tick. So whether they vote for me or not, I still love them. I just pray that that love to one day, they'll show it back to me. I'm hearing a slogan like no mistake. What does that mean? Oh, the delegates are saying they made a mistake four years ago. But this time, no mistake. No mistake. Yes. The mistake is Ajua Safo. Oh, well, they said four years ago there was a mistake. So you put two and two together. All right, Honorable, I wish you all the best. That's uh, Michael Okwe Jr. there. Uh, she, he is a former ambassador to India and currently the CEO of uh, Ghana Free Zones Authority talking to us now. But right behind me, Aisha, before you get in there, you have to go through some thorough scanning. They, they have to ensure that you don't send any foreign material into the voting area. And that's what the police officers there are, are currently doing. So they take 10 people at a go, screen them, let you get to the second parameter of it. Then you leave your phone there and then go to cast your ballot. Uh, like I said, the atmosphere here has been calm. Uh, uh, there's high level of uncertainty as to who is likely um, to win the election. We know anything can, can happen. But one interesting thing uh, or information I picked uh, was that, you know, in the previous election, we know um, Kennedy of Japan was here to support um, the incumbent MP. But this time around, he isn't here. So uh, people feel that that, that disconnect and maybe will affect her, her, her fortune. So that is what I can report for now as we are waiting for the official uh, close of polls at 2 p.m. It just left with barely uh, 40 uh, minutes for the polls to uh, close per the communication given by the party. So if you don't have further questions, I'll hand it over back to you, Asha, and the team uh, in the studio from the Dome Kobia. Uh, I mean, uh, atomic uh, pack uh, in the constituency. Actually, it's 44 uh, minutes to ending the elections. That's Samuel Mbora from the Dom Kwabinya constituency. Asabi, you know what baffles me? For sure. Adwa Safo, after all said and done, I mean, the NPP actually wanted her out, okay? And then you had the opportunity. She came to face the vetting committee, and you still let her go? You I had a fine I, opportunity I, I, to dismiss her. I don't buy the idea that we wanted her out. There was a debate. The NPP wanted her out because you said the, she wasn't helping well, the work of were, parliament. Yeah, there were issues about her absence in parliament, which was an open thing. We all discussed it openly outside and in parliament. Uh, but she's a party member. She, she still wants to contest. And you can't use that to disqualify her, no. So we gave her a chance, and of course... What, what, um, what does your constitution say? I mean, your, well, I've heard your national organizer come to say that anybody who doesn't support a certain decision by the party must resign or has it's, breached it's the, the, constitution constitution the constitution and all of that. Somebody is in parliament and it's not helping your cause, and you can't use that to disqualify no, it's her. We, we also needed to hear her side. And from some information we picked up, she wasn't in the best of health. Uh, to come down. I mean, there's a lot of debate, which we, we could have investigated it. But we she was have, all over on social media. Over, I don't know whether you've heard something called postnatal depression. And, but she looked I don't okay. Know, but I thought so. I, I've worked in England and I've gone through training on postnatal depression when mm. young ladies have children. It, you never know. So now she's cured of now it? She's, I don't know. I am not a prof medical professional. <laughs> but I can tell you that there were issues and the issues may... It may be part of the health issues, but we never investigated it. But she's a party member, and she was allowed in the vetting to go. So that's uh, water down the drain or the bridge. Going forward, I looking at the scene there, it's, it's exciting. You see, if you are not a party person, you stand outside, oh, they are, they are, they are fighting. They're... No, no, no. Look at them. They're excited, singing, laughing. 
it energizes the party base. That's you only delegates. They will laugh with you and go and oh, disgrace yeah, you. Yeah, but that's part of it. You got to you got to read between the lines. And if you think they are not supporting you, you better back off. If you want to be in there, get part of the game and, and be part of the game. Mm. And I, I am enjoying the excitement. After this one, you see them, the party's energy is up. And that's what we need to tap and get everybody on board again. Um, Adwoa is, is like a sister to me. I mean, if you don't know, I've, I've supported Adwoa throughout. Most of the contest has been there. Uh, and Mike is like a brother to me. Mike's father, um, Michael Green Sr., uh, is, is a party sword. Okay. Uh, when I came from London, he wanted me as a deputy energy. And then President Kufo then shifted me to local government as a, a full cabinet minister. Mm. Me and Mike have stayed together. And the, his son is like a brother to me. When mm. he was in there, we were collaborating on a lot of things at Siga. So the two of them, I don't have a back in there. That one, I'm just looking at the two of them. Anyone who wins, I'm okay with them. Um, but the excitement created, it should come. That was they've done. And Michael Kufo was addressing the delegates, and your, your reporter was still talking. That's where the votes are. His priority is the delegates, <laughs> not you. No, not but, 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 but do you know the signal that the Saints that oh as for the NPP you can just do whatever you like and then you come and apologize and then you are you are no no we have we have discipline in the you party are, I must admit the the point is is there something that Ajua Safu brings to board that I mean we may not know I mean as outsiders as because it looks like she, she's character. untouchable she's so, no no nobody's untouchable in this party the party is supreme but we look at individual cases case by case. Adjua's case bordered on, on health grounds as well. Most, most of you, we don't talk about it. I'm, I'm here talking about it, right? Because I, I was listening to the behind the scenes. I never commented. If you notice, during, I never said anything because I was picking up signals from us and I made mention of postnatal. Sometimes you're not aware that you yourself, you are under postnatal depression. You think you're normal. So yes, I'll post a selfie out. But hey, go through. It's, it's after a baby. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. So let's calm down. She come around and she's gone back to the constituency. She's met the delegates. Now it's up to them to decide if they want her back or and it's divided, as you can see. Equally divided. But you see, there's a third force we are not mentioning. Sheila. Yeah, Sheila. You see? <clears throat> and you can never tell. Politics, she may remain the calm one at the background. Before you know, she goes through the middle quietly. Some say she, she was she, planted. By who? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Aisha, by who? In our, in our party, uh, and if you notice this uh, pa uh, parliamentary premise, we never stopped anybody. In fact, there were complaints by some people who thought we should have stopped them. Um, because that's a part of our constitution. We talked about your contribution to the party for the last two years. You got to actively have nurtured the constituency. Some of them, we believe, never did. Complaints came up. But the general secretary and the chairman and the, uh, the national executive and national council say, uh, if they are party members and you qualify on the basics, let them go through. So that they don't come out and say, ah, you, 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 allow, you didn't allow me, I'm going independent. When you are in government, independent candidates are dangerous. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to try and, and rope everybody in. So I do as one before, you know, the quiet one uh, might, might steal the show. It's an exciting area. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, we're all looking forward to seeing what happens in uh, Dom Kwabenya. And whatever happens will have an impact on the NPP going forward. But let's go to Nsaome Dwejri because uh, some delegates are alleged to have shown their ballot to one smart Amuafo, a supporter of the MP. And that led to a fight. There's Nano Semafo there who... Uh, Money is monitoring events for us. Uh, he's joined us. Uh, Osei Mafo, uh, we are seeing some confrontations and a number of police officers there. What, what really happened? Thank you very much, Aisha. Mark Amwafo, the NADMO director for the Insama regime, who is an agent for the incumbent MP Frank Anadompe, was heated somehow for two or three to four meters away from the booth was accused of asking delegates to show him their ballot after some printing. Agents of Hayford now raised strong resistance for them. So it took the police to, however, get involved to separate the factions. So at the moment, when you come to the constituency, everything is generally peaceful, and we have barely 39 minutes to close of course and everything is going on smoothly here at the moment. 
Eastern Regional Secretary of the Party, Tony Osege, is the supervising officer at the center here at the Prince Watson Memorial High School, is ensuring the peace and harmony in the constituency and especially where voting is taking place. Some 998 persons are expected to cast their ballots for their candidates to elect a leader to represent the new patriotic party here in the in some Adjuji constituency. Another prayer is being contested by Hayford now the CEO of the Ghana Library Authority. So when you come here, generally everything is peaceful here. The police are doing their work as it's supposed to be, except the few issues that occurred at 10.30 in the morning. Nana, so um, as we speak now, voting is ongoing and that uh, issue has been resolved. Um, how many people have voted so far? So far, some 925 have voted here in the constituency. So I'm sure by close of polls at two, if not all the 998, at least the party will be able to have some numbers to talk of that at least we had these numbers showing up here in the constituency. At the moment, the constituency is calm and voting is moving on peacefully here. All right, Nana Osei Ma for bringing us uh, those, uh, that information from uh, the Insawo Medwedri constituency. Another on prayer is the incumbent MP. Well, I haven't heard his name uh, um, on that list of the giants who will be falling, but definitely uh, you, you just have to, <laughs> you have to fear delegates. But in the Wager constituency... <laughs> I'll talk about that later, but in the Wager constituency, there's also a clash between the police and some unknown men believed to be supporters of Jerry Ahmed. One person has been arrested after he attempted to attack the police. Uh, Kenneth JC is our man there. He joins us. Kenneth, what led to the scaffold? Right, uh, Aisha, before you are allowed entry into the perimeters of the voting center, you have to uh, be someone who has accreditation. So they are issued accreditations. These men, we are told, entered here without accreditation, and that led to a confrontation between them and the police. I mean, one tried attacking the police, as you rightly mentioned, and then the police had to arrest one of them who had a cat around his neck due to the scaffold that happened between uh, the two of them. Earlier, uh, I, I did indicate that there has been widespread issues of vote buying. Some people are accusing the incumbent MP, Tina Mensa of sharing 2,000 Ghana cities to people believed to be in her camp and leaving out the rest. Uh, meanwhile, they are also saying that the challenger, uh, who is uh, in the person of Jerry Ahmed, has also shared 200 Ghana cities to each delegate, regardless of which camp you belong to. Voting is still ongoing. There are a few people who are still in queue trying to uh, wait for their turn to, to vote. But the, those who have voted say that the uh, election has been smooth. It has been without any scaffold except what happened between those unknown men believed to be supporters of the contender Jerry Ahmed and the police which has led to one of them being arrested uh, Aisha can I just see so um, you say about how many people have re uh, voted so far Right, so more than 500 people have voted so far, we're told by the uh, Electoral Commission here. A few of them are also left, uh, you know, to vote. They're expecting about 1,191 persons to vote because there are 1,210 names on the register, but 19 of them are deceased. Uh, so minus 19, that leaves them with 1,191 who are expected to vote. Not all of them turned out. But those that have turned out, more than half of them have voted. Let's get closer and speak to the Deputy National Women's Organization Party. Word with us. Good afternoon. You're live on Joy News. Hi, good afternoon. Right. Uh, 
I believe you are here to monitor uh, proceedings. How has it been so far? So far, I must confess, it's been um, quite positive. Um, gone were the days that you would have elections. We have uh, a lot of recorded incidences of violence. But this time around, I think it's quite minimal as compared to previous years. I've been to a couple of centers, very peaceful, very understanding. I think these are... This centre is one of the few places with recorded incidents of violence. But in, all, in, in general, the overall value of it, I think that uh, it's quite peaceful. And um, kudos to um, the party leadership, uh, MPP party leadership, for bringing out a good rules and regulation to govern this electoral process. That every member of the party, whether delegate, a parliamentary candidate, is being adhered to. Again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Electoral Commission, thank the security services led by the police, and then the media as well. With the support of you guys, I think we have one of the peaceful and successful elections. We've heard incidents of vote buying. The delegates have confirmed to us that Tina Mensah has been sharing 2,000 Ghana cities to some of her supporters. That is midnight, this midnight. And also uh, uh, the contender, Jerry Ahmed, has also been sharing 200 Ghana cities. Why has there been widespread vote buying going on? Um... I want to talk um, emphatically with equivocation. Um, vote buying is something that is being um, alleged. Each time there's an election going on, even at the local elections, right at the, even in classrooms, in schools, campuses, it's been alleged that there's, uh, there's always incidences of vote buying. As I am standing here today, I have not witnessed somebody giving money to a delegate to go and vote for him or her. But of course, if it happened, I can't confirm to that because I don't have any evidence to that. But of course, it's happening everywhere. It has been alert everywhere. And um, I think it's high time, um, if it is really happening, it's high time we look into, um, it, it's not something worth, worthy, uh, uh, worthy. We have to look into stopping that or something. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so that is the Deputy National Women's Organizer of the uh, new patriotic party so this is the uh, police vehicle that whisked uh, those gentlemen away one of them being arrested after uh, confronting the police and then trying to enter the premises without accreditation so this is the scene here at the wager uh, Bawe ma basic school b or ma basic school 2 here in the Greater Accra region, where the incumbent Tina Mensah, who calls herself the landlady of the area, is trying to uh, go for another term and is being challenged by the CEO of the Authority, Jerry Ahmed, who says he is a tenant who is trying to, uh, you know, oust uh, the landlady of the constituency. Uh, there's been relative calm it's been peaceful except that one incident that happened earlier and also the incident of go, uh, vote buying has been rife uh, a lot of delegates have expressed their anger of not getting 2000 Ghana cities which was shared at dawn by the incumbent MP uh, Tina Mensa and also 200 Ghana cities that were shared by the uh, CEO of Coastal Development Authority Jerry Ahmed who is trying to unseat incumbent MP Tina Mensa. And have you been able to speak with Tina Mensa? Have you spotted her? And what has been her response to the allegations? Yes. 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 Uh, Tina Mensa has shut down those allegations. When I spoke to her earlier, she did maintain that she had wished that uh, uh, Jerry Ahmed was not allowed to contest. She made that allegation during the vetting uh, a few weeks ago that uh, Jerry Ahmed has not stayed at this constituency for two years or more per the party's regulation. But since the party is saying that if they oust or if they disallow Jerry Ahmed to contest in this constituency, it will make the party unattractive and 
you know, it, it, it will move a lot of youth away from the party. That is why she allowed uh, Jerry Ahmed to contest and has shut down the allegations of vote buying, but maintains that she is going to win. She's not scared of her competition. In fact, Jerry Ahmed is no competition or no match for her, and that she will win once again. Can I just see from the Wager constituency? This is where to stay, your election headquarters. Definitely, we have our men scattered in all the constituencies. They'll be bringing us updates as and when it unfolds. But if you're looking for where to get all the information, it is your election headquarters here on Joy News. I'm taking you back to Bantama. Uh, Asenso Boache is the incumbent. He's being challenged by Rafael um, uh, Kennedy, Japan's brother, and uh, this morning there's been some showdown already. Uh, let's go there and listen to Asenso Boache, who's been speaking with my colleague there. And wh why one motion before coming here? Oh, I, 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 that's what I do anytime that I go to come here. Some people decide to come here. Yeah. So, so, this, this time, the code of conduct was different that um, no one should come delegate and people are months that nobody, nobody has come delegate. nobody has come delegate. so don't don't even bring that have you seen do you have any evidence to suggest that a delegate has come to I, I, I've seen, I have I, I was at the church I saw you know the the, the guardian no, 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 it was a morning motion. And some people decided to, to, to join. There was no, uh, no delegate. So they were allowed to go in and out of the church? church, church Anybody, church. and the people you saw at the church, many of them were not there. Some were residents, when I uh, mentioned that I would be having a morning the church, uh, the devotion service, we decided to join. So uh, maybe some of the delegates joined, and that's fine. Yeah. They also residents. It is suggested that after that they were they were biased today because I saw some people being biased here. I don't know. They, they, they might have made their own arrangement. All right. Thank you very much. So. And you said that. You just saw the Asenso Boachi, the incumbent MP for Bantama, and you've seen that fierce. Um, you know, leading up to this elections, the campaigns and the strong words by his contender, Rafael Japon. And today we'll find out uh, who really owns Bantama. And uh, that question I asked you, if you thought that uh, uh, Asenso Boache was the man and he was the man to do the trick for the NPP, why then do you allow somebody to contest him? Because your executives, they have the power to stop anybody from contesting someone if they don't want. Um, but we are a democratic party, um, and we, we are as fair as we can be to everybody. Um, yes, there are some MPs uh, or some individuals who are heavyweights, and usually we, we sort of wish them to be in parliament. But it's up to the, 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 the candidate himself and the party executive to talk to the other uh, uh, possible contenders and convince them why they should back off if that's the case. We do that behind the scenes. We don't come and tell you. But some people will stand there and say, oh, I want to put my heart in, and you cannot stop them. So, yes, as in Sue's case, for instance, I wish that he had been allowed to go on a post. Um, I guess about 33 of our uh, candidates were allowed to go on the post. Yeah. So as and so maybe. But then you, you notice a strong brother of the, the contender. Uh, 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 was it Kennedy Japo <laughs> who gave you that showdown for you to allow his brother to contest uh, Asen Sobwache? Because you, I know Asen Sobwache is a darling boy. Uh, I mean, it would have been just easy to allow him to go and oppose. Asen so has paid his dues in the party when he was a young man in the university tertiary and was the test confess, test con president. He's, he's achieved a lot in his short time in politics uh, compared to some of us. Um, but you've got to be democratic and not be, be personalizing issues when it comes to politics. Um, and then you have to look at, at the aftermath. When we finish, would the other contender be happy to join the campaign? If not, then the party must take a decision and look. Like in the Jerry's case in um, Wager, where Tina thought he, couldn't, he hadn't been there. He himself described himself as a, as a tenant, mm -hmm. wanting to overthrow a lot. A landlady. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but the party has to say, look, he, he's holding a, a huge chunk of delegates. If you disqualify him, what's the consequence after that? And he's a party member. Does he qualify 
under the party constitution and regulation, yes, let him go. So we have, we have to take political decisions. So it's not like every time we, we it's our own rules, right? It's our political party decision and the regulation. We can waive it um, and we can consider. So I give credit to the national executives and the national council for making the, this election very, very free and fair. Yes, some preferred others could have been banned, but no, let them go. And I, I said I support as well. To thank you, I'm backing ourselves to win, and he win. You, I tell you, he win. I, I can bet you he will win. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a shrewd operator. I said, so it's a shrewd operator. There are people who, obviously, politics, not everybody likes you. It means sitting here, not everybody likes me. But, but I have a, a fair idea as to what makes me tick in public life. It's honesty, loyalty to the party, and serving with humility the people I came to serve. If I don't have those qualities, I must as well go and do my private business. Right? But in the public space, I got to be loyal to the party. I got to be loyal to my leader. I got to be honest about what I do and the people around me and be humble enough to serve them. Um, you cannot raise your shoulders. I think you, you know everything. No, you listen. So the party takes all these decisions into account and, and give us, and so far, if you look at or listen to all your reports, no major incidents anywhere. Smooth almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes, minor incident. Once somebody has been picked up in wager, um, he may not even be a delegate, maybe a supporter who got excited. Excitement, as I said, anxiety, uh, pressure. Uh, it's, it's the most interesting, intense heat moment for politicians. But, but, but listen to constituents, and some say Asen Sopoache is not that approachable. Some even say he's stingy. Have you heard that? <laughs> <laughs> you, see, oh, you see, this policy, you can never win everybody. Let me tell you, I've been to Bantima several times, um, and Asensu is down to earth. He's done a lot of projects, a lot. Um, not only projects, he's always over there. Whenever you're looking for Asensu in Accra, in Accra, he's in Kumasi. And, he's, so, and I know most of his, his uh, executives. Um, and I don't buy this thingy thing. Some people approach you and they think you should have money for them every time. But you Sometimes promised said to them. You, 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 prom pocket. you promised them. You promised heaven and earth when don't. you knew we that we, we you were not supposed to do everything. That's we, how come you buy coffin for people that you don't even know because you promised them. Uh, there's this general impression politicians promise heaven and, and don't deliver. It's not true. We, we sort of gauge what we can do and then use the language that fits in. <laughs> and, and sometimes if you, you promise might... people that you bring them water, <laughs> you make sure you connect them to the, uh, uh, the national grid. Yeah, and are... you know that you are not directly in charge yeah, of but, that. But if you're a member of then parliament, you must be ready to, to Aisha, foot the bill. Aisha, if you're a strong member of parliament, you must be able to lobby and deliver. I was a member of parliament in Vancouver in for one term. Look, I delivered. And, and my name is still there. Even a market has been named after me, Asabi Market. Okay. And because I, I, I developed the area, it was a, a dump yard, I developed, developed it and shifted some of the market women there, they named it after me. So it's, if it's, you don't deliver, I mean, constituents will be um, justified to kick you out. Oh, yes, why not? But, but the point is that you must have the ability to meet ministers, the president, if you are in government. You have to, even if you are in opposition, you must have a way to raise somebody in government. Look, we've been in opposition. I, I have a way of even reaching the NDC ministers when we were in opposition. Okay. You, you got to have the human human relations that builds across bridges. And and so you can promise and say, look, I'll try and do that. But time is the words you use. You can say, look, I will try and do this. I will, so you leave a, a window of, of, of when you are, you are, hey, you promise it. So I say, I use the word, I'll try. Mm. So if you didn't succeed, it's not my fault. <laughs> or I will lobby hard. Or I know these connections. I have a network. Mm. It, let people know that you don't, you're not the final decision maker. Um, so, but then you, journalists, for instance, ah, he promised roads. But he's not a road minister, but I can trade in. If I, I was a minister for local government, for instance, and what, one thing I did, I can tell you, I traded in um, uh, water from Fantiman for a market for Hakman Usho Ajima, I I'm a minister, we sat in a company table and I said, Hakman, I need water. In Fantiman, I had no water, so we had to go and drink the Bay Fikrum water uh, system. And he, he gave me the chance, I went to the president, President Kufu, we got the Dutch to come in with some uh, facility. And then I asked, because local government, I had the, uh, the resources for markets. So I gave him a work, he gave me water. So that's the lobbying capacity of a, a politician. Yeah, so if, if the um, constituents are demanding what you promised them, they, they, they'll just be fair. But if you can't deliver, go back. You see, the, the key thing about politics is, is the connection, is the, is the communication, is the, is the networking. 
If you keep away and they keep saying the same thing and you don't address it, it means it's true. You are not delivering. If you go to them, you have a forum. You meet them one-on-one, -on -one, open your doors. They understand why well, you are what, delivering. Do you, what do you think about Rafael Ijapo and his brother, Kennedy Ijapo, campaigning for mm, him mm. and all the showdown yes. that he's been giving? It's exciting. All, all <laughs> it's exciting. I mean, proud to today's I, election. Exactly. No. It, you, sometimes in politics, don't like, don't think the boring down the middle of the road and the normal. I don't. I am. I'm somebody who is always like, when you meet me, I'm, there's no dull moment with me, is there? Mm. I give you something to think about. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, so, so in politics, when you have a situation with us and and Kennedy, Japan pitching camp in Bantama, which is one of our base. Uh, it's so exciting. Everybody wants to know what's going there. The whole of your reporting, you go back to Bantama often, don't you? Yes. And it also excites the party base. For me, that's the beauty of a contest. Um, a contest g gives the party people a chance to voice themselves, their voice, their, 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 their voices out, <coughs> to, to voice their concerns out, and also to address them, and also to get them on the kill that carries the momentum to the general election. Because we have 2024 December coming, and you need to keep the momentum for the next... 10 months mm. and that is the beginning of it the mpp is on the roll this if it goes smoothly which i believe it will and we would finish with no incidents major anywhere um if you listen to rafik in wa yeah um, yeah and this is the war. <laughs> But, but, but listening to you with how your party structures who goes unopposed and who can be, uh, you know, who mm. somebody can oppose, it, it's quite interesting. And there's a trend which I don't know if you have, it's come to your notice. The fact that um, some people uh, want, they know they actually are not going, but they would, they would um, show, uh, you know, present themselves that they want to go because they want to secure the spot for someone else <laughs> and, and 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 straight away a capim is a capim ah, south or a capim a capim south Every. yeah and and exactly what obiamo has done because prior to the um elections uh, people knew that he wasn't going i'm sure maybe he had spoken with one or two people so it was i mean it was just general knowledge that he wasn't going then he shows up and says i want to go and your constitution uh does not allow him anybody to compete with him and then last no, and last minute an mc or dc uh -huh, an, an mc to compete, to compete with yes. an incumbent yes. MP. It's a regulation. It's not and so regulation. last minute then he says i'm not going but he denied the mc the opportunity to also contest i think there's a petition from the mc and the party has put that place on hold and, and so that, I don't want to comment too much on that. Um, in politics, things change so rapidly, you can't believe it. And so that's why if you're a politician, you must think on your feet. Um, people change their mind. People change their mind. And you're allowed to. This, this it, is, it, it this is, not, is not set in stone. This is too sudden not to be deliberate. <laughs> you are reading his mind here. Your mind reader, are you? That's how, uh, that's how think, other people are reading. Behind it? <laughs> no. I mean, that's what people OB, think. OB is a, is a friend of mine. That he I secured know. the spot for his PA. I wouldn't comment on that. OB is an honest politician, very straight down the line. In terms of statistics and how analysis is done in politics, in our party, I can't see anybody go past OB Amua. And OB is so honest that he may have decided not to go. Something must have changed and he wanted to go again. In terms of whether he was seeking a slush for something, I don't know. That's why the party has put a hold on it. Let's wait for the outcome. They will go for the contest. If the party allows the MC to go, fine. If they don't, that's democracy. But you will listen. You will listen. Mm -hmm. It's petitioner here. So, but going back to what we're saying, politics is such an interesting that if you are into politics, be honest, be straightforward, and also be prepared to serve. You'll be hit. Yes, you, you don't go scot-free, mm -hmm. you'll be hit. But you must have the tough skin to listen and go home and sleep and think again and come back. Mm -hmm. But what we are doing now is a prelude to the, the December election. It is the question of, would we get back together after this contest with the tension and all that? What I'm looking at is a silver lining of calmness and coming back together and nobody gets hurt mm. um, physically or emotionally destroyed too much so that coming back becomes a problem mm. so i'm appealing to our party people that this is part of our game if you are scared of a contest you are not a politician mm -hmm. you will lose some you will, you will win some 
That's part of it. If you lose, it, it teaches you a lesson in life. Mm. Do, do you foresee that, um, you know, that unity coming so easily? For instance, in Bantama, if somebody like Raphael loses, you've heard the threats from his brother. It's not going to be easy. Um, I've heard the threats. I, I didn't take it seriously anyway. Ken knows me. I mean, I tried to reach him. He won't pick my call. And I said, <laughs> but what's the threat for? If you have anything open, put it out. Or some of us, you know, we can lose, we listen to him. But he never reached out to me or to anyone I can think of. So it's a, it's a, it's a threat I don't take serious. Whatever it is, it raises the temperature, <coughs> which is not healthy for, for us. It, after that, I mean, I will find out, I'll still reach Ken, Ken, Ken in Japan. I'll reach him. I'll find out the basis. Because what he says, some of them are serious issues and bordering on state matters. And I want to know. You understand? Yeah. We want to clean up if there's any problem. So you cannot just raise it and disappear. And say, if you vote for my brother, uh, I won't raise it. But if you don't vote for him, what kind of logic is this? <laughs> so we will get to that point. But for me, his brother is a contender, and I wish him luck, but I'm, I'm back in Asensu. I believe Asensu has done a fantastic job in Bantima. I believe that he would win. And, and it's just a lesson to him too. He's a young man, he's learning. If at least has, it has put him on his toes. <laughs> if you remember the last two elections, he's, he's come through nicely. But now this one is a test. It, it builds him up. I believe this one would make him a stronger character. <laughs> Your election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol. Uh, Petrosol has been behind all the coverage you've been seeing, and they'll be supporting us throughout the elections in December. Um, where to stay for everything uh, MPP parliamentary primary is your election headquarters. And of course, uh, we'll be going through the list of the giants who will be falling. Uh. <laughs> I didn't make that list. Um, I mean, it's the political watchers. They are watching the space and they think that uh, there are certain people who definitely will fall. But again, you cannot delegate, <clears throat> you, you have to fear delegates. You may think that uh, this is what uh, will happen, but that delegates will always pull a surprise on you. And if I want to even just um, run through just of the few of the names that I have, um, definitely you have someone like uh, Katie Hammond's name coming up. You have a new Medu entry's name coming up. Ah, that's, yes. my, that's my, my side, the other side, Kodomo. Okay. His name is here. Um, you have somebody like John Kuma, uh, you know, um, he's getting some fierce opposition there. He's struggling, actually. Uh, if he wins, it will be a struggle to win. People think that it's not going to be a, an easy game for him. Uh, upon Kroma, um, no, okay. yes, I mean, he's, he's not going to fall, but I think there's fierce opposition also in his constituency compared to the previous election. So these are some of the names. But let me also share with you a breakdown of the uh, regions, the, the numbers there. It will be showing on your screen. So, right, before that, maybe we should talk about the MPs who have decided not to go. And uh, Joe Gatte is one of yeah, them. Osei Chairman Sabonso is one of them. Uh, Joe Weiss is not mm -hmm. going. Uh, yeah, Bekwai. Uh, a number of them. Uh, what's his name again? Atachia. Atachia is not going. Damboche is not going. That, that's a whole lot of experience moving out of parliament. It's one of the reasons why I want KTE. You want KTE? <laughs> I want KTE. Okay, let's go to Martina. Uh, Martina, where are you? Which constituency are you right now? And what's going on there? I'm in the Yendi constituency. And so far, it's been largely peaceful, except um, outside where we have supporters of both um, the incumbent MP and Adia Abiba Tashani, who are outside, and um, what they do is any vehicle that is coming in, they want to be sure it is not somebody who is not supposed to be inside who is coming in. And so they have had times that they have had to stop vehicles, back some vehicles, make some noise, but largely it's been peaceful. One incident came up um, a while ago, two candidates came in, their names were blank, we are told, and, but they had voted in the presidential 
And so the two candidates agreed that the state that they are allowed to vote. And so they have voted. And very soon they'll be doing the counting. They started packing the boxes already. And we are getting ready for the count. So the Yendi constituency, I mean, have you spotted the aspirants? Have you had any conversation with them? They have um, both said they won't speak now until the re results are declared. And so we would get their reactions as soon as the results are declared. So at the moment, uh, what's the uh, atmosphere? It's tense because um, it could go any side. And so there's tension. You can't sense tension in, in, in the place there. We have had times that they have had some few arguments. But largely, I can see that it's tense. Right, you had uh, Martina Bugri, she's in the Yindi constituency with uh, some updates uh, from that constituency. Uh, election ends at 2? At uh, 2 o'clock, so I don't know why they are packing up early. They should wait. Uh, um, somebody may be late coming in, you never know, unless they've exhausted the, the So, so we, we are about to see a showdown when they start the counting and then people but now that's start a hot area. Yendi knowing. Is a, Yendi is MPP to the core. Oh, really? Yeah, if you go to... Yeah, uh, 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 Farouk Mahama. Ah, Malik Al-Hassan. Yeah, that, Malik Al-Hassan, who was uh, deputy um, speaker. Yeah, that's right, and became interior minister. Mm. And I've, I've stayed in Yendi late night sometimes, and I enjoy Yendi politics in the Gomba style. Um, and the two of them are hot candidates. Mm. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, Ma Malik looked a ver like a very calm gentleman. Yeah, he, was, he was a senior. He, was, he, he has to be respected. Yeah. So everybody came down. He trained all of them. Yes. But now the young sister. But not Farouk. No, not well, Farouk. Farouk is, is like me. He's yeah. hot blood. Oh, yes. He's a young man. <laughs> he's a young man. And he's, he's met his match in a He actually did very well in the oh, last, last election. election. Yes, he did. And, and he, he took the cue from his father, too. Yeah. From our vice president, mm -hmm. Ali, uh, Muhammad. Ali Muhammad. And he's represented the family very well. And, and I like his style because he's like me in a way. But Abibata, you you'd underestimate her. And she's an her. underdog, oh, right? She's an underdog, but if you know Abibata, she also has a, a pedigree of, I think her father was also in the old party, the PFP or the UP. And so she has a pedigree behind her. And they have all, they've got bases. So I'm looking forward to that, that particular contest. It's going to be very key. The exciting thing about what I'm saying is, is, the, is the cloud. Is, is the cloud how people are converging? This is what you need: the adrenaline in people and the commitment to ensure the party works for all of us. My hope and my prayer is that when we finish, we all come together. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, Paul, when you lose, oh my God, it's so dumping. You just disappear. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, you. But you allow people to grieve. Yeah. Just give them room to grieve. But find a way to reach them. That's what we're going to do as a party. We'll reach, to, we'll reach everybody and bring them on board. If anybody decides not to come on board, we'll find a way to still push them to come on board. <laughs> it's MPP. And, and this, is the the bank road. Yes, this is the bank <laughs> route to, to the 7 December election. Let's go to the Wale Wale constituency. Eliasu Tanko is there. Eliasu, uh, what can you report from there? Well, it's still a very tense situation here in the Wale Wale constituency. As you know, before this particular day, there have been a lot of uh, controversy uh, in that particular constituency. Last week, we had uh, some supporters of an, a candidate attacking uh, the regional minister and the party council of some part, the party uh, council of elders chairman at his residence where they were holding a meeting. Uh, today, this morning, the election didn't uh, begin early. It started somewhere around 8, 6. And as we speak, there are several number of uh, delegates still queued uh, waiting for the attempt to vote. It's been very tense. The contest, as we understand, is currently between uh, the sitting MP, who is also the uh, Gender, Children and Social Protection Minister, Hajja Lattabazwira to Abudu, and then the vice presidential uh, staffer, who is uh, Dr. Kabir Sia Mahama. Uh, there are two others, but from the ground, uh, what we are learning or what we are hearing, especially from the delegate themselves, 
uh, is that this particular contest is between two, these, these two individuals. We have heard earlier that there were attempts uh, to prevent contest in this particular uh, constituency uh, for the sitting MP to go on a post. Uh, but as to speak, that didn't happen. She's been contested by three people, including, I just mentioned, the Vice Presidential Staffer, Dr. Kabiru. Uh, but, I mean, voting is ongoing. There are a lot of secrecy. I can cargo count close to 40 police uh, personnel that is currently protecting uh, the process as it's ongoing. Uh, but uh, from the look of things and from speaking to the agents and then the electoral officers, uh, uh, the, the, the delegates would have to vote beyond the 2 p.m. that has been stipulated because I can still see a large number of the delegates still in the line waiting for the attempt. Have you cited any of them? Have you spoken with them? Well, I've spoken uh, earlier on. I saw the, the sitting MP herself here. I have been engaged. I engaged uh, Dr. Kabiri himself and one other uh, Muhammad Jandu, I engaged these two individuals or these two contestants, and they uh, were all hopeful of us uh, winning this particular election. Uh, we have not been able to speak with a member of parliament herself, but uh, she's been around this particular uh, venue since uh, the election or the process began earlier uh, this morning. Elias Sotanko is a man. He is in the uh wale wale constituency uh we'll be bringing you more from there let's go to uh sunyan west uh precious semivore is there precious um i hope that place is calm as well generally it has been calm since the election process started at 7 39 uh, in the morning it has been generally peaceful here not even a single incident has been recorded uh here uh, because security is that tight. Uh, everywhere you turn to, you see quite a number of uh, police personnel uh, there ensuring that the process uh, goes through uh, successfully. Uh, as I speak to you, the time is due and the electoral uh, officers have started dismantling the uh, uh, booths and packing the uh, tables and other things to start the sorting of the uh, vote uh, cast. But on the candidates taking part in the exercise, the incumbent uh, Ignatius Bafoua, who happens to be the Minister for uh, Labor Relations, uh, he is here sitting at uh, my far right, and uh, other two contenders trying to challenge him for the seat one. Uh, Amma from Poma, lawyer Amma from Poma, and then uh, Mubarak uh, Abdullah Sisi, also sitting here at my right. Now, talking about uh, Abdullah Sisi, uh, he, when I engaged him earlier in the day, uh, he said he was attacked in the morning around 2.15 a.m. Uh, on his way from Sunyani to Tra uh, at a town known as uh, Kobedi. Uh, where he was going to see some delegates and, and all that. But he also says that he can't really say whether it was an assassination or uh, it's linked to this uh, election uh, exercise that he's taking uh, part in. Uh, he, he claims to have sustained uh, some injury and swollen hands. Uh, even as I can, I can see bandages around his chest and then on his right uh, hand. Uh, a bit slowly, uh, but he says he's managing the case has been reported to the police, uh, though he lost two computers and valuable sum uh, of, of money. But uh, he is doing well here trying to monitor uh, the proceedings. Uh, the minister is confident that what he has done so far, the delegates have given him the assurance that they will vote for him again to lead the party in the general elections. And he believes the delegates because he has worked with them, he has been in the system for that long, and uh, he trusts them based on his track record. But lawyer Mark Mpoma also believes that for over 20 years, the minister has done his bit, and he needs to appear with a new energy, new faith that will lead to development that will impact the life of the youth as well as infrastructure development 
uh, in the uh, constituency. Uh, one thing that cut across all the people that I spoke to, the contestants, including the regional minister, is sustaining the unity of the party after this particular exercise. Uh, the hope is that whoever wins, the rest will all come together in support so that they will be able to uh, retain the state come December uh, 2024. So that is the situation here. Generally, come. some people have gone around where the sorting and counting will take place, and in a minute or two, the electoral officers will start the counting of the uh, ballot. Precious Sam Evo from Sunya in West. Uh, we'll definitely go back there. Uh, we are hearing that voting has ended. Counting should start uh, any moment from now. Uh, as I'm about saying, before I let you go, um, you, you said that the NPP has a way of bringing back, I mean, bringing unity back. Some 17 members were uh, disqualified prior to this uh, election. Have you been able to uh, reach out to them to bring them back on board? I can tell you the party executives have been talking behind the scenes. Um, um, we've been talking to people from the Afafanto group. Okay, <laughs> and the Butterfly group. The Butterfly group. So the party is a family. Um, we built it by our own toil and, 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 and sweat. Um, unlike our cousins in the NDC who were handed over power easily by the PNDC, NDC, and in government, they formed the government. So they've, they've lived that by that. <laughs> but we, as individuals, came together, built it by our sweat and, and our toil. And so we, we, are, we are sort of, we're brothers and sisters. Yes, others get angry, others get sad. It's our job as a party to convince them that, look, you came here, nobody forced you. You came here. And you believe in our principles and tenor, freedom of worship, freedom of worship, the liberty of the individual, uh, the freedom of association. That's that kind of liberty. We not when nobody we, controls anybody. Not when people feel that they are deliberately uh, being eliminated. Uh, no, to yeah, but we have the channels people. to voice your, your your agitation. We there are channels within the party where you can talk, and then we listen by the system that okay, he's been unfairly treated go to the next level to the appeals committee and go to the national council we have all the some would not utilize the system rather they go outside and talk we like to them to come to us and sometimes they approach individuals like us and we go to the party and say listen to him so i know the party executives at all i know steven tim and justin could and then the b they, they they are smart guys they have a way that like me i mean i talk i come out i explain they sometimes go quiet and behind the scenes that sometimes we do things without noise and they're doing that so the 17 don't worry they're coming on board mm. those who will lose today um it's part of the game me, me as i say, i've lost before <laughs> i've lost before but i haven't fallen out i'm still in and and i've lived through kufu i've lived through Akufu, I do. I, god will now live through every one of them and i'll be around the key thing is about service to people with humility and also honest and loyal to the party. If you lose that loyalty, you may be the first, the, 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 what do I call it, a, a grade A student or whatever, you have the first class, I won't, I won't get you near me because you're not loyal to the party's cause. So, MPP people, I am appealing to all of you after today. What I have seen is an exciting moment. Tensions come in election. People say one or two things. My brother Katie Hamad said, he wears his hat on his sleeves. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I mean, Katie and me are brothers. He wears his hat on his sleeves. I used to do that. When I was young, I've, I've calmed down a little bit. Okay. And, and sometimes pull out and keep quiet. And then go back to it and resolve. Because if you keep quiet, you don't resolve it. It's in you. It's pain. Katie comes out, say it as it is, and, and resolves it. What he says is to be, a, it's, as I said, a, a, a storm in a teacup. It will go away. But if you listen to all the report, it's calm. Excitement is in the air. What we need is excitement to during the uh, December election. And we're going to generate it. It will come. Okay, we'll it see will. how but before that we go, ends. Give me one minute. Um, I believe I'm finishing. Yeah. On the case, which is my minister's job, on a matter concerning a Kunfi traditional council, okay. where there are issues, what I went to address yesterday or the day before, um, uh, the president had said something they were not happy with, and I went to say, so today I said to them, I'll be on air. And I would, I would, on behalf of myself and president and government, say there are things that may not have been said or better or in a different way, but it, it didn't come out as the way they understood it. Mm -hmm. I am their son. I thank them for listening to me when I went there. A few people and the Nana, especially Nana Chindi, 
and the, and the chiefs and the queen mother. Um, whatever we need to do to get a Kofi where it is. President really wanted to do more, okay. but it, it didn't happen in the way that we wanted it, and we, we lost the seat. Okay. But that doesn't mean we don't have them. So okay. if they are listening to me, it's an opportunity for them to say, hey, I'm the minister for chieftaincy. Mm -hmm. If there's anything, address it to me, okay. and I will, I will come. And, and since you brought up the issue of chieftaincy, let me bring back uh, Boko. I mean, Boko is boiling. Yeah, yeah. Um, w what have you done as, as chieftaincy minister? I've done a lot. I've been there several times. I've been talking to the, the people both in the Kusak. But the issue uh, hasn't been resolved. It's, it's more of a criminality in the midst of trying to resolve things. So there are factions in East Side who feel aggrieved and, and take retaliatory um, actions. The security is on top of, the, of that. So if you notice, uh, the, the, most of the criminal activities have moved away from Poco, Poco Centre. It gone mm -hmm. to the outskirts, mm -hmm. Binduri, the, Kusiga, uh, that area. And uh, there's been the mention of military men at the center of this. We, but we're, we're trying to, you see, we, can't, we, we, are, we don't want to be overstretched in Boko alone. We have the whole northern border with uh, Burkina Faso. It's a worry to all of us. Mm -hmm. We are not careful. Uh, you have, you have this, they can spring anywhere, anytime. So I am appealing to my uh, Pusak uh, people, who are mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters, and I'm appealing to the Mampurisis, who are my brothers and sisters. Nairi is my father. So is um, uh, Azuka, mm -hmm. Abugri, uh, the, the, the Bokuna is my, my father. For me, I am always in their middle and taking the point. Sometimes I take, I hate myself. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is for me to talk to them on the phone, which I do. But the criminality of it, we will tackle them. The security on top of the game. We just need to extend our tentacles to the outskirts. Yeah? But we also have to be careful not to be overset and drawn from the borders of other areas. So it's a balance. Myself and the National Security Minister, we are always, always talking. But the Otum 4 is handling the underlying chieftaincy matter. Uh, we thought it's, it's something that can be dealt with quietly. But when there's a killing, it brings up the issue of chieftaincy again. So my hope and my prayer is that they listen to Otum 4. He's out of the country for a uh, break. I will see him as soon as he comes back. And I will be talking to Bokuna about it. We're talking to Nairi and see where the common ground is and we can arrive at that. Let, let Other areas like Bimbila, I told them, relax, I'm dealing with Bimbila, it will, it will be resolved. Let, let me take your word for it because Boko is long overdue. Is, uh, we are hoping that the, the issue will be dealt with, but it's your election headquarters. I'm grateful. Uh, so, um, Stephen Asamoah Boat saying his former MP from Fanseman and uh, currently Minister for uh, Chieftains and Religious Affairs. Voting has ended. Uh, counting should start by now. Uh, so we'll be going back there. Right now, Benjamin Akapo will take over from me. It's our continuous coverage of uh, the NPP parliamentary primary. Where to stay? It's your election headquarters brought to you by Petrosol. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Enjoy the rest of our program. My name is Benjamin Akakwa. Welcome back. We still are your election headquarters. We're bringing you every scoop when it comes to this NPP parliamentary primaries across the length and breadth of the country. Of course, we know there are some 312 candidates in 100 constituencies that are hoping to get elected. But the question is, who will get elected? Between now and the hour of about 4 p.m., we're going to be bringing you the latest in terms of the results. You know that the polls close at 2 p.m. And between now and 4, we'll be letting you know how the tide is going voting-wise across all of these 100 constituencies. So stick and stay with us. Of course, we're bringing you all of this courtesy of Petrosol Clean Fuel in full quantities. Now, my guest in the studio joining the conversation as we touch base is... A member of parliament for Akime Ibuakwa South, he currently is. He's also served as Minister for Works and Housing up until January 2021. I'm sure you know him already. He's none other than Samuel Atta Achia. He joins me in the studio. Thank you, sir, for My joining. My pleasure. My pleasure, as always. And, and since it's the first time this year, I, I think it's only fitting to say Happy New Year. The same to you, my brother and friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be taking you across the length and breadth of the country, bringing you the latest dynamics. There are areas where there have been a few tussles, scuffles, um, the bit about 
having accreditation, not mm. having accreditation in Ayawaso Central, Wajak Bawe and the tenant versus the landlord, and then everything else happening in Bantama, for example, where uh, the current Minister for Works and Housing is actually, Francis Asensu Bache, is locking horns with the brother of Kennedy, Ejapong. It's turning into quite a boiling event there. We'll bring you every little bit that you need to know across these constituencies. But, Honourable, coming to you, um, you're not going yes, please. for that seat anymore. Yes, please. You've already expanded on why you're not going. But I'm still curious, after all these terms in Parliament and all the talk about, oh, we need those old dogs, old faces, mm. experience to stay in Parliament. Why now? Well, I think... Uh, it's all self-measurement, my brother. Self-measurement. Yes, you, sh you should know when to stop. And when you come to a certain time in your life, you should know what, for my part, your legacy years, you know. Done 16 years, put your legal practice aside considerably. And now you are going to be 62 years this year. Why would you want to disturb your soul? With additional years, you know, trying to be a member of parliament with all the troubles associated with that office. Okay, I'll come to those yeah. troubles. Um, let me quickly cross over, though, uh, with your permission. Yeah. Let's cross over into the Ashanti region, Bantama to be specific, the Florida uh, of the MPP. We have Chairman Wood to me interacting uh, there. Let's catch what he has to say. This particular exercise, you need a very unified force or front to be able to uh, ensure that. I mean, power is retained. How yes. are you going to ensure the regional? I mean, chairman of the party. How I have, do you I have been, I have been a chairman for three consecutive, consecutive terms, mm. and it has been our customs, custom that after the election, of course, we are all human beings. So we set up a reconciliation team, and we have a very strong, respectful people in Ashanti region. So it's their job to make sure that they bring everybody on foot for us to go. This is the last election. We started from police station and to coordinating and then to constituency to the region. All the elections, once we reach to the stage, it become critical. But after that, we see that we bring the people along for us to move. So from there, then we move to the national. Then we move to the presidential. Now, you see Kwabla Japan, Baomiya, Denimo, Apreku, everybody is playing ball for us to move. So obviously, voting one will win and one will lose. But it's the person who will win, everybody will come together for us to support. So as the party... Chairman, you see nothing wrong with... with now? How are you doing now? We are okay. I'm talking about your health. Are you okay now? I'm okay. I'm okay. Chairman, you see nothing wrong with I'm, I'm some okay. of these um, aspirants giving out money to delegates to vote in their favor? Oh, my brother. My brother. You as a journalist, we have to be a reality. Once I'm going, you look for Lorifers. Is it, is it not normal in Ghana? Or you look for law affair, then you say it. So once I'm going, I'll go free. I, I, I want to look for law affair from you. Yes, then I will, I will, I will do that and give so, everybody so, so, a law. So what is your opinion when it comes to um, delegates taking money from aspirants? To, you know? Nobody is doing that. Nobody is doing that. Now they have voted and finished. Okay? They have voted and finished. We have, I have mentioned policies and stuff. This is what the Ghanaians want to know. You know, we have our way of selecting people. So they should, they should, they have done very peaceful and I'm proud of it. Thank you so much. So that is the new patriotic party, Ashanti Region Chairman, Bernard Entribo Siako. Um, not too long ago, we saw pictures of Bernard Entribo Siako who has been hospitalized. And um, when he had to appear before the Kumasi Traditional Council, um, according to the reports we had, um, he was not well or he was indisposed. But fortunately, today he says he is well and he has been monitoring what's been going on um, in this election. So Chairman Wuntumi sees nothing wrong with some um, delegates taking money from aspirants to vote in their favor. He's, he sees it as just um, something for, from, for their transportation to the polling stations and uh, you know, uh, for, for, for the duty that they are doing today. So as you can see, sorting is ongoing here in the Bantama constituency after the sorting 
counting will follow and it's expected that in the next 15 minutes everything will be done and the results will be declared. So we are here in the Bantama constituency. Both um, aspirants are seated. Um, to, my, to my left is Honorable Asensu Boache, incumbent member of parliament for the Bantama constituency. And to my right is Ralph Japon, who is seeking to unseat him. Those are supporters of um, the incumbent member of parliament, Honorable Asensu Boache. I will want to get close to them and find out why they are making such noise because the counting just started and it's it's it, it's it's we, we wouldn't know why this is happening so i don't know what you are doing chief and yaba chief and yaba chief and yaba okay okay i don't know 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 uh, I share quantity now. My year go on now. Why do you say so? They don't say change. Bebe, bebe, bebe. If say you two about, why would you kind here? Near kind. If you say you have dinner, you be able to move here free, you know. Be able to move free, you know. You say I so the young one do so. I say so the young one no more kind. Back when you are not too happy, it is just you know say banana. I say I say banana be beer. All right. Uh -huh. According to this gentleman, in his opinion, from the sorting that they have done. Asenso, who are the incumbent member of parliament, has taken a clear lead. And you know, this excitement transcends throughout the support base or the fan base of Asenso Boache. They are very excited. They believe that he has won. And uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the crowd keeps getting thicker. The, the, the supporters outside continue to rush in here and join their counterparts, jubilate. According to them, they are in clearly, but unfortunately, from where I, I, I'm standing, I'm unable to confirm what they are saying. But to them, they've won. But you know, the, the other side, that's the support base of Ralph Japan. You, can, they, are, they are not heard here. Let's continue. Let's listen to some of the chants. <laughs> And I am Jima, my colleague, bringing us the scoop from Bantama in the Ashanti region. And of course, uh, the chance from the fans of Francis Asen Subwachi. They believe they have clinched it, but we shall wait till counting is done. That is the only way we here can independently confirm. Once it is signed, uh, determine who has in fact won. Uh, something that caught my attention, though. Uh, you know, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. But in this case, political miracles. And Wuntumi recovered and showed his face. Well, let's now uh, head to Pru West. Daniel Techi is there. There was a brutality recorded earlier in the day. Um, Daniel Techi is in Pru West. He will be uh, bringing us the scoop. Daniel, what is the latest you can report uh, as far as that incident? Someone was injured, hospitalized after uh, a melee broke out in the Pru West constituency. What's the latest? Okay, the latest I can say about whatever happened uh, just yesterday. Uh, is that um, the particular person who has been uh, attacked and hospitalized is now doing well. Uh, he was. Do we know the person's name? Yeah, he is Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Tijani. That's Ahmed Tijani. Okay. Yeah, he is the deputy. According to information I got, it, he is the deputy national coordinator for Blue West. That is the Blue West Constituency. Um, apart from that, if that incident that happened yesterday, I would say. Uh, the whole process has been very peaceful. Exactly two uh, o'clock, 
14 hours ended and started uh, sorting out. Uh, after the sorting out, uh, there is every indication that shows that Honorable uh, Tino Janola, the CPT Road Minister, is taking the lead. But we will wait until the counting is done before we can declare as to what figure he had in taking the lead. Now, with me here is Honorable Tino Janola because people have uh, uh, already surrounded him, wanting to uh, congratulate him. But Honorable Tino Janola, uh, you're welcome. This is Joy News. Thank you, my brother. Okay. Um, let's start from uh, what happened yesterday. Even though you spoke to the media, we've gotten your side of the story, but what more do you have to say? What's the guy's situation, Tijanin Ahmed? What's his situation now? Well, thank you so much. Uh, TJ, as we popularly call him, is responding to treatment. Uh, the incident that happened yesterday was so unfortunate because this is an internal contest. And on, incidentally, the, the TJ guy is related to my opponent, uh, the Alaji Garba, Edith Garba. So that was so unfortunate. Uh, but uh, the security agencies have taken up the investigations of the matter, and we are very confident that they will come out. Uh, I mean, they will, they will do whatever is supposed to be done to make sure that the law and order is brought to full West Virginia. Has there been any arrest ever since the incident happened? Not really. The police spoke to me and they said that they could have caused the arrest of the, um, the guy, the perpetrators. I mean, for the peace, uh, peace of the election, because they wanted the election to pass peacefully, they have suspended the arrest of the guys until after the election, when they will start investigations. And for them to start investigations means that they, are, they will definitely arrest them before mm. they commence investigations. Okay. Now, uh, the All right, so that da Daniel Techi is bringing us the scoop from uh, Pru okay. West. We'll connect uh, to him shortly so that we can find out what else has happened. At least we know that for now, they do not know who exactly perpetrated this act of violence. But in the interim, let's cross over to Adanse Asokwa, that constituency. Uh, Katie Hammond, Kobinata Hero Hammond, Nanabuachi Dankwa Yadom, is uh, there for us. Uh, what is the latest that you can report? From what we gathered, it was going to be pretty tough for Katie Hammond. Well, thank you, I'm counting that and then, in fact, they just concluded um, with a counting of the ballot papers, the ballot sheets, which go in favor of the incumbent member of parliament, um, KP, that's the incumbent member of parliament, for Adam So, um, you can see him clearly um, in your shorts while his supporters have, have joined him to celebrate, even after that, or even before EP comes out to officially declare the results. I <laughs> Unfortunately, we do not have the best of uh, connections, uh, so we'll now uh, cross over to Tano North. But before we go there, let me just let you know that as far as the Akim Swedro uh, MPP parliamentary primaries are concerned, guess who uh, came up tops per the information we uh, gather? So uh, there, we are looking at a certain honorable Kennedy or say Inyako. But in Kwesimintim, uh, we also have Dr. Pran Prince Hamid. Ama, who has got the nod uh, there, with quite a si sizable difference. I'll be bringing you the scoop on that. Let's head now to Tano North constituency, where uh, Gideon Bwako is slugging it out with the incumbent MP, uh, Frida Prempe. Prince Ajimandria is our man on the ground. Prince, what's the latest you can report from that constituency? And um, you can see the project of Adidas Blackwood sitting outside the Gaber Down where uh, the square building was held. Uh, as I speak to you, something is ongoing for the food of Adidas Blackwood. Uh, uh, for the look of the region is feeling with confidence since um, these students are giving me information, but I cannot confirm um, whether we have won or not. But from the look of the the project is and mm. they are waiting for the election. Well, we'll wait for that to be done in that area of tunnel, and then uh, we shall get the latest uh, from there. But thank you for bringing us uh, all that information. So as we know it now, 
uh, at least when it comes to Kwesi Mintim, some 248 uh, votes polled by Dr. Prince Hamid Ama, and he has uh, taken the day. Uh, let's bring you some more sights and sounds from Bantama. Uh, it's that straight fight between Francis Asensu Bwache and, of course, Rafael uh, Ejapon. Well, uh, that is the latest. We'll, we'll keep following this. We'll keep tabs on it so that once there are votes, we can confirm. Once the sheets are signed, we'll bring you the details. But in the twin city of the western region, Mayor of Sekundi Takrade, Abdul Momin, uh, was prevented from voting in that constituency. Nanama Bodiwa Moncha joins us with an update. Nanama, tell us uh, what exactly happened. What is the latest on that situation? It appears we've lost Nanama. We'll try to reconnect uh, with her. Nanama, can you hear me now? Hello, Nanama. Uh, please unmute Nanama if you can hear me. Nanama, if you can hear me, please unmute so we can hear what you're saying. Yes, please, I can hear you. All right, so I was asking about that situation. What exactly happened? Can you walk us through what happened? Okay, so around two thereabouts, the mayor for Sekendi, Takrade, Abdul Mumuni Isa, walked in from the main gate. He was stopped there because, according to the police officers and the officials of uh, the constituency, Takrade constituency, they told him that he doesn't have access to uh, the place uh, today. Uh, but unfortunately, the mayor, um, I'm sure, did not understand at all. Uh, refuse, you know, to accept that information. So he proceeded to where they have to check you, take your phones and bags before you can be able to proceed on the voting. So that place, he was asked to go back. And then uh, one of the aspirants, um, Frederick Sam Incom, confronted him that he's not supposed to be around because he's not a delicate to be around here at the Presbyterian Church, Takrade constituency but he refused there again so there was a little bit of friction between the mayor and the aspirants the police rushed in you know to support uh the incident he still did not accept the fact that he's not supposed to be around he proceeded to where they cast the vote and so the police um told the aspirants that's frederick sam income to relax and when he gets there and his name is not part of the list he will be asked to go back and um, he got to where they cast the votes and then they look at the if your officials look at it. His name wasn't part of the names there, and so he was asked to go back. In fact, it wasn't something too nice to experience from uh, the mayor. So that's the incident that happened here. Thank you very much, Nanama, for bringing us the scooper there. Let me just bring you up to speed on some of the latest figures that we have. Indeed, in Akim Swedra, in the eastern uh, region, we do know that uh, the candidates that went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, these are the votes they secured. Kennedy Osei, Nyako 194, Jerome Kwame Akodo, only 10 votes, and Kwesi Kwaning uh, Bosompim, some 94 uh, votes. Total valid votes, 298. Uh, rejected votes, nothing. And uh, the total there, 298. Which means then that Kennedy Osenyako has got the nod and the controller uh, has actually lost control of that situation. But then we can also go back to uh, Kwesimintim constituency. And uh, of course, as we see it now, 409 votes cast out of 421. Dr. Yapukwa Abeid and 160. Dr. Prince Hamid Ama, 248 with one rejected, which means that Dr. Prince Hamid Ama has uh, got the nod there. We also have unconfirmed uh, results from Tano North constituency. He may have won. I'm talking about Dr. Gideon Buako uh, with a whopping 444 uh, votes. We're yet to confirm that, but these are provisional results we're bringing you. Uh, and what we're seeing for Honorable Frida Prempe, we all know her, 221 uh, votes, and we're waiting for official confirmation from the Electoral <laughs> Commission. We'll bring you more uh, shortly, but let me come briefly into the studio. So uh, here we are. 
interesting figures coming, uh, yes. and some big wigs already beginning to fall. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a picture. Bantama in there. We've seen uh, Katie Hammond at Danse Asokwa. And uh, per the polls, Global Info Analytics and the rest, it didn't appear he would carry the day. What is your reading of the results we've, we've seen so far? I'm not too much surprised, you see, because first of all, um, when you're born with people for long and you meet their needs, uh, you have a modicum of decent people who mm. might want to return gratitude. So an incumbent like KT Hammond, I'm not surprised at all. And um, sometimes, too, uh, they are fed up with you. And you've been around for a long time. Um, and there's donor fatigue. Mm. And you believe that, oh, a new messiah is on the scene. Mm. Why don't we deal with a new messiah? Rather man, than rather than you. Because we can get more from the new you, messiah. You get a new messiah. He's not had experience of longevity. Mm. So these are some of the permutations who determine whether you will continue in office or not. Is this, are, you, are you speaking from experience? Yes, I mean, because I'm, you are a multiple term member of parliament. Yes, I've done I've, I've done only four terms. I'm, I'm going to do my. I'm closing now, and I, I know the, the psychology on the ground mm. is always like that. I see. Uh, interesting question, though. Uh, the chairman of the Ashanti Regional Branch of the MPP uh, in the Ashanti region, of course, Chairman Wuntu, be showing up here all of a sudden, and the tussle with with uh, you know Otumfu and the rest. What do you make of that development? How, how do you think it impacts the party? Well, it's most unfortunate. You see. But I know Asante Man has superior intelligence to know that it is not one man who constitutes MPP. And that the foibles of one man should not sort of uh, mess up the entire uh, New Patriotic Party where the Ashanti region um, is our stronghold. So I know to mm. all find a space in his heart uh, to forgive the waywardness of one man. Do you think he was wayward? Well, if, if, if what we are, the evidence we are gathering is needed to go by, I mean, Santa, you mind what to say, especially when they've given you a place of prominence and trust. If it's an ordinary person at KGT, it will have no consequence. But by his stature, whatever he says will have some impact, but it doesn't reflect the thinking of the majority of the people in the Santa region. And whatever it is, his foibles, I am trusting God that Two and four have a space to forgive him. And whatever sanction they might want to act on him, <coughs> we do so. But it's very unfortunate. I'll come back to you later on that. But let me cross over now to Tanon North. I was just announcing that Dr. Gideon Boako had carried the day. Prince is on hand to bring us the scoop there. Prince, uh, what's the latest you gather from Tanon North? I'm confirmed to you that Dr. Dr. Gideon Boako has won the Tanon North seat, uh, the primary for the NPP. Uh, he garnered 444 votes as against 221 for the incumbent Honorable Frida Pempe. The EC is now about to declare um, Dr. Gideon Bwako as winner of the primary. So even um, we are going for the declaration from the Electoral Committee. All right. Thank you very much uh, for bringing us. Um, uh, these, are, these are confirmed reports, I believe, yes, Prince. they are confirmed. They are confirmed. Confirmed. So signed by the... The, the different parties, the different parties involved in the, the Electoral Commission? Yes, yes. All right. So these are confirmed uh, reports or results that we are bringing you as our correspondent on the ground confirms in Tano North, Dr. Gideon uh, Boako. Let, let me come back into the studio. Now, uh, Frida Prempe only recently took over from Cecilia Abnadapa, Sanitation and Water Resources, and already she's bleeding in, in her constituency. It's not looking good for her. It's a beating. What do you make of it? Well, I think it's all um, uh, building on hope. They believe that um, uh, Dr. Gideon um, uh, um, uh, is close to the vice president. Mm. So the prospects are that when um, the vice president should break the eight, it will not be ignored. Are, are you suggesting that all of a sudden, because of the switch from... Uh, some say, yes, the, the president still is the leader of the party. Others are leaning more towards the substantive flag bearer of the party. All of a sudden, that, that picture comes in. People are leaning towards Dr. Baumia because he is now flag bearer and they want to be in his good books. Certainly, because mm -hmm. President Kufuad is at a place of no return. So, if you, if you like, uh, his goodwill is almost ended. And therefore, people want to pitch camp with the one who has the future of the, of, of the party and of, by extension the nation. So this is all that people do. The, the interest 
and their personal interests will hold sway. And I'm not surprised at all. I see. Yes. If you look at the gap, almost 200, in fact, 223. 223. Yes. That's the difference. That's a lot. That's a lot. 444 for Dr. Gideon Boako. Yes. Uh, 221 yes. for Frida Prempe. Yes. That is to tell you that um, uh, they might probably are, are fed up with um, the new minister. And then they believe that the future is with Gideon. Mm. That's my sense of it. And maybe the money, like you said, is with Gideon. Because he's coming in fresh and he can bring you money. It could be so. It could be so that uh, uh, maybe he was more romancing more, uh, in terms of money than uh, the minister. It could be so. I don't have all the facts on the ground. Mm. All right, so we have more coming your way in Herman Loa Dentura. And we know that the deputy minister for employment and labor re relations, uh, Bright, is also down. He's losing in that constituency. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll bring you the scoop on that. We'll bring you the latest as we get uh, the figures, as we uh, confirm them. Well, it is confirmed, as I, I, I get to know now, confirmed that indeed he has lost, but we'll bring you the exact figures so uh, you, you know. And uh, we'll be getting the reactions as well. Uh, Honorable Atatia, so here you are, a number of big wigs, a number of people that we're expecting to carry the day, actually not carrying the day. Any surprises in there? I'm not too surprised, you see, because at the end of the day, we realize that it is a self-sacrificing job and you could be worn out. And if you don't know what it is to remain as a member of parliament, I mean, it can be something else. So they've decided that we've had enough. It is not only in that space called parliament that you can serve the nation. Mm. You can also do a lot more for the nation outside parliament. And if you understand that, and sometimes too, if you have something to do seriously after parliament, there's an incentive to say that I've had enough. I want to move on with my life. So these are some of the permutations that will determine whether I want to stay so long. And I guess that influenced your decisions. But let me ask you, I mean, interesting picture. I'm even looking at Ifia um, in the Western region, Joseph Kujo also uh, losing there. I'll just confirm that for you. But you're having a, a number of the stalwarts in this administration losing. You have a deputy employment uh, mm. you know, and labor relations minister swept aside. Uh, Frida Prempe, sanitation, water resources, tsunami, taking her away. Mm. Uh, isn't that cause for worry? That, what does that establish for you from where you sit? Well, it depends on so many factors, you know. One of the factors you should bear in mind is that when you stay too long too, people get fed up. And people will say that, uh, let's see what the new man will bring on board. Like, you want to change your diet. <laughs> so, the factors are, are multiple and varied. But it, is, it doesn't show much for me, as so far as I'm concerned, that uh, probably somebody is a deputy minister and he didn't find favor with uh, the constituency mm. and somebody is just a uh, journey just come uh, depending on all that so there are different dynamics at play different dynamics at play such but, but, but but interestingly a lot of these people i i mean they've been your colleagues in parliament you've been there in the yes. parliament with them yeah. some have also been colleague ministers at some point in the past and, and they're all falling by by the wayside w what do you think is accounting for this I don't, I don't think many of them have fallen. So far, you've mentioned two. So that could not be, uh, if you like, a probability that all of them will fall. But I'm telling you the truth, that the sheer fact that somebody is a minister, mm. but he hasn't got a grip on the constituency, does not entitle him to be renewed in his mandate. Mm. That is my sense. But at least we see a number of them falling by the wayside, even if not all of them. At the end of the day, we'll get to know as we get closer to it, maybe it, it, 4 p.m., yeah. we'll get to see a number of them. It, it, but what it, signal does that send? Maybe expectations have not been met. Some people believe that when we're. So the party has failed? It, I don't think the party has failed. The point of the matter is that the expectations are so high. They believe that when somebody is a member of, uh, is a member of the government, then that, that, that is good terminus with you owning the. Bank of Ghana. So, oh, he's become a minister. But is that not a, an impression that you yourselves, members of parliament, have created? No. You created the, the impression that you have money from here to no, the moon. I have to tell you, my dear brother, where is that impression coming from? I don't think any 
from serious, you, the members of parliament. No, any serious member of parliament promise <coughs> heaven to a constituency. Mm. Yes. Everybody will say one have, thing. Have you listened to some of what some of these people were saying? Well, it's all appetites. They believe that when somebody is a member of parliament, then if you got his blood, if you suck it dry. It's all your appetite. What is the point of you saying that without me being a delegate, I have no means of income and resources? So if you believe that becoming a delegate is a, is a, a money-making venture and somebody wouldn't meet your appetite, that doesn't mean that the um, MP promise you heaven. <coughs> no MP can give you heaven. Right. And, and that is what we should come to terms with. Let's now head to um, Herman Loa Dentra. We have <coughs> the beggar pardon. Rejoice MFA there. And uh, we were bringing you that scoop about the deputy employment uh, minister who has lost uh, that uh, bid. Rejoice, what's the latest you can report? What figures are you seeing that you can share with us? Right, Ivan. So they've declared the result and the CEO of the Exim Bank, Lawrence Exim, had won the uh, primary here in the lower central constituency over the incumbent MP. So earlier in the morning, we, I interacted with some of the constituents. You could see or hear from their expectations, their views that they've longed for this change and they've really prepared themselves for it. And then contrary to that, the incumbent MP said he had worked, he, he was at the grassroots level with the people, he had interacted with them, he has done his best, so he hoped to win. So we're patiently waiting for the results to confirm whether he's going to win or the constituents are going to take over this side. And then our prediction, or their prediction, was right. Uh, the uh, contender to the incumbent MP had finally won with 273 votes, and the incumbent had 169. So you could see jubilation, they are happy, they are jumping, they are singing all around, and showing their support behind the, uh, uh, the CEO of the Exim Bank, Lawrence Exim Well, thank you very much uh, for those details. Uh, let's now cross over to uh, Rafiq Salam in Sisala East. And um, he actually is going to be bringing us an update from that part of the country. Uh, Rafiq, tell us what's the latest in Sisala East? Who is winning? Who's losing? Um, voting or the polls lose and then counting has uh, already been done and the results satisfied. He promised that he was going to win a landslide victory. Many didn't believe it, but he went on to prove that he is a man of the moment in the society of constituency. I'm talking about the Deputy Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Abidicina Isaku. He has been able to retain his position and then will be leading the MPP to the 2024 polls in the society of constituency. He polls out of the 529 uh, delegate list. He has 433 uh, votes as against 86 uh, by his contender. Mm. Uh, who is a 45-year-old political science lecturer at the University of Ghana, Dr. Joshua Jebutier uh, Zato. And so the writing was really clear on the wall that uh, he wouldn't have any difficulty in winning this particular seat. And so he won and won massively. Thank you, Rafiq, uh, for bringing us the details there. But have there been any incidents worthy of note that you can share with us? Um, there hasn't been uh, an incident. What we can tell you is that out of the 559 uh, voters, uh, only four were not able to vote because uh, they had passed on, and also two uh, were also uh, rejected. But All right. I see, I see some scenes in Bantama, uh, and uh, the, the, let's cross over to find out what exactly is happening there. on a radio those are the scenes that uh, we cannot exactly confirm what is happening but Raphael of course a Japon uh, there was being he was having an interaction first with the Ashanti regional chairman of the MPP uh, Wun to me and then we saw him lifting his hand interacting with some of those in the crowd we do not know what is happening he's speaking now let's hear what he has to say 
Papua Senso. Unity is the most important thing. He's done well. He's done well. Yeah. I must concede. But you're confident of winning. What happened? Yes. No, 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 I no, told no. you, no. It's an, it's, I told you, I told no. you it was an election. Yes, yes. It was an election. You either win or lose. And I have lost. He yes. won. So he's done well. I congratulate you. Tomorrow yes, life goes on. They have That's showed good. a very big ma ma maturity. Yes. As a regional chairman, this is the first time I have seen somebody who have a confidence. You know, listen, losing in life, if you see all the rich people in life, you know, losing is a process of success. So for him to lose and come to his brother means he's a winner. You know, it's MPP who has won. And if you hear him, he's saying that he's going to support his brother and MPP need That's unity. Indeed. So he's going to lead it. So this is mo most important. Yes. So I support him and I will help him as a regional chairman to do that. As a and regional uh, chairman, what will you do to bring unity to the back look, He has started. Look, we are, we are, now, we are, we are now, already, we are already now, united from Now he's, so a, he's united. ambassador. So all the this campaign wow. that we are doing, he's with me. And we are going to move from constituency to constituency to regions for Ralph to be the unity ambassador in MPP. Yeah, yeah. very much. So, so, moment ago, Ralph Japan, that is the contender in this election, um, he he just conceded defeat. He went over to Asenso Boache, that's the incumbent member of parliament, to concede defeat and also um, congratulate him for the victory that he has struck in this election. According to Ralph Ejapon, um, the incumbent member of parliament, Asen Subwache, has been able to chalk about 70% of the votes that were cast here today. And Ralph Ejapon says he has done so well. He's, he, he's convinced that he has been uh, he has been defeated in this particular election. So it looks like um, the noise or the chance that was coming from the camp of Asenso Boache pointed to the right di direction. And uh, from all indication, Mr. Asenso Boache has won the election in the Bantima constituency. But unfortunately, as we stand here now, we do not know the figures. The EC is still within the inner perimeter. They are going ahead, collating the results. And in a few minutes, we expect that the Electoral Commission gives us full details of the results. Now, Ralph Japan, that is the contender of Asensu Boache, the incumbent member of parliament, is making his way out of the um, premises or where the election was done. He is being escorted by his supporters and some of the media people are, um, you know, uh, showing his exit from the area. So it looks like it's almost a done deal or it's a done deal for the incumbent member of parliament for the Bantama mm. constituency, Francis Asensu Boache. Um, the, the chairman of the New Patriotic Party in the Ashanti region was also here and he congratulated both of them for the contest here today and he believes that Ralph Japan, as he said, will be part of the campaign team for the NPP in Bantama constituency. He will play his role to ensure that Bantama constituency keeps the seat and also the NPP in the Bantama constituency um, keeps the seat and also um, campaign for the the vice president to become president in the 2024 general election. So Bantama continues to become, we are waiting for the electoral commission to give its final verdict here for the election. Well, thank you very much, Nana Yaojima. Uh, those are the scenes from Bantama, that crucial constituency for the new Patriotic Party. We also have information trickling in that another one, Samuel Tashia, who has lost Deputy Local Government uh, Minister Collins Augustine Intim of Finsun North. He, uh, from the data we're gathering, from the information we're gathering, has actually uh, lost uh, that contest. Let's go to another heavy, well populated uh, constituency. You know, Dome Kwabenya, Sarah Dwasafo, and Mike Okwe uh, Jr. Well, uh, we have Samuel Umbura bringing us the latest from there. Sam, 
what exactly has been happening? This is a crucial constituency. What's the latest? Well, Benjamin, good evening. I, everything has come to an end here. And right behind me, we have the police officers taking position, guarding the ballots, and they're about to do the sorting. We had over 1,800 of the delegates coming to cast their ballots. We know this is a populous constituency across the country with this particular uh, number, not just within the MPP election, but when you talk about the national elections, they are leading in terms of the voter population. So uh, the atmosphere here is quite um, uh, settled. There is uh, some level of uncertainty. People are waiting, uh, I mean, calmly for the sorting and the counting to begin. We know there are three aspirants in this crucial race. The first has to do with uh, the incumbent MP, Sarah Adjuasafu, who is seeking re-election. Uh, I think she's going for her fourth time. And Well, that's the situation at Domikwa Benya. Samuel Umbura bringing us the details. The connection is patchy. We'll try to reconnect with him. Before we go back to, uh, before we go to Offensive North, I'd like to come into the studio briefly. Francis Asensuwache has actually uh, got the nod there. Some said that if he won, it would also mean that Kennedy Japan's grip is, is being lost. After all, his brother uh, stood. And you know the threats that, yes. that came up, that if they voted for Francis Asenso Bwachi, he would expose him, that he was corrupt and all that. W what, what signal does this send? It's unfortunate that um, um, even that uh, message should come out that he was going to expose somebody from the same party. I found it very unfortunate. If there's something to expose from the party, shouldn't he? Well, they know how to solve uh, party problems and wash dirty linen in-house. Because I do not see anybody who is serious as a, a party person that believes that he will wash his dirty linen in public. And no, 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 but I, have a, I, I, I take a different opinion. He's talking about national issues. He says this person talking is about corrupt. National... He says this person is corrupt. That, why, that moves away from party. It becomes why, why this moment? Uh, that could be a blackmail. But why not? Yeah, because all this why, if you have a dossier on somebody, why didn't you let it out? But because you think that, oh, you could intimidate the constituents and the delegates so that your brother will win? Is that, is that a permutation? Mm -hmm. For me, it least much to be desired because was a dossier built overnight, the information is having a bad sense. So it's quite unfortunate. But I don't believe that's how we should do our politics at all. Yeah, but now the people have said that, well, we call off your bluff. And uh, I see. We believe oh. that um, uh, Asensu is good for us. All right. So you, you, you actually were rooting for Francis Asensu watching. You say he, you believe he's good for you, so you are... No, he's good for the constituency. I didn't, I didn't pay particular attention to what was going on. But I could tell you that uh, he's a good material. He can do a good job. Mm. Well, let's uh, just bring you some of the scoop, uh, the latest that we are gathering. If you go to Adansi Asokwa, that uh, interesting constituency, Kobinata Hiro Hammond, we all call him KT Hammond, has a one uh, there. He actually is... Uh, the Minister for Industry, now Trade and Industry, will be bringing you the figures. Also in Enshia Eso, it was said that it was going to be tough for Dr. Stephen Amwa. We all call him Sticker. Well, it appears he's been able to scrape through uh, there wow. as well. We'll bring you more on that. Are you excited by those? Very much so. I a, see. Um, I, I, I know that he's a good parliamentarian. I know so that. Which one of them are you referring to? Dr. Stephen Amwa? Stephen Amwa. Right. Yes, I've been with him. And I think that, that was the last, this is the second term, right. I suppose. But he's acquitted himself creditably. He has the courage of his conviction. His articulation is good. And he's a very, very one of the star wars of our party in parliament. Mm. I'm glad for that. And now he's been uh, rewarded with uh, that deputy ministerial role. There are others that I want to take a quick um, look at. I've seen some interesting ones in Sawam Edouajiri uh, coming mm. through. I'll just find uh, those and bring you uh, the details of that. But one thing, at, at least from the figures we've seen, uh, hey, Fotsian, the CEO of Ghana Library Authority uh, did not uh, make it. Frank Anodompre retaining uh, that position with 734 wow. uh, votes versus 228. Of course, uh, provisional. We'll still get you the details on that. But when you talk about education, one man who's been in the picture, the member of parliament for Tafo Pankrono in the Ashanti region, Otafo, and uh, he has actually got the nod, Vincent Echo. As if we 367 votes from uh, the sheet, the polling sheet, Sewa with 337, a gap of 30. That was what made the difference uh, in there. 
All right. So let's cross over back to Bantama, the Florida uh, of the NPP. The Electoral Commission is declaring. Full 650. Yeah. Representing 78.22. Honorable Raphael Ejapong, pool 181, representing 21.78. Rejected vote, one. Now, total valid votes, 831. Total vote casts, 832. Now, on behalf of my regional director, I declare Honorable Francis Otesio duly elected. Thank you and may God bless us all. <laughs> Well, first of all, I would like to thank the Almighty God for making it possible. Right from the start of the campaign, we said that the battle is the Lord and that whatever the Lord has said will come to pass. And that is why throughout the campaign, we were singing that wakano ababam eradi wakano ababam eradi akasa obeshira ye obeshira ye na ya ye shira so it was a battle that belonged to, to the lord and he made it possible so i thank god the almighty for making this victory this resounding victory possible. Secondly, I'd like to thank the delegates, Bantma MPP. Thank you very much for giving me this resounding victory. God bless you. And third, I'd like to thank my wife and my children for giving me all the support that I needed. I also want to thank my mother my late mother, who sacrificed her life and worked very hard to give me the education that I needed. Thank you very much, ma'am, wherever you are. Thank you. Wait a minute. It was, it was our late former general secretary, Sir John, who said that we should fear delegates. But in Bantma, we don't say that. We say respect delegates. Respect delegates. Because we, you were asked, you, you were asked to jettison your own son, the true son of Bantma, for someone who does not come from here. But you said, no, that will not happen. And that did not happen. But this is MPP. Whenever we are having a contest, we, we, we campaign, and after the contest, we come together. So I want to pledge my commitment to a, a, a one united MPP that will rally behind Dr. Mahmoud Baumia for the big battle in 2024. Today, we have made history in Bantama. We made history in Bantama. I am the only MP. I am the only MP who has survived a real lesson challenge. No other person has done it before. And we have we have broken the four-year term jeans. We have done that. Nobody has done that before. So we are going in this election knowing very well that Ghanaians need MPP for, for Ghana to be successful. And therefore, I, everybody, everybody, whether you voted for me, whether I didn't vote for me, we should all come together so we prosecute a one MPP campaign. But this is Bantama. We, we make our own decisions. 
nobody can come here and tell us what to do. Bantma, they, it is Bantma, the only constituency that won all the police stations in the constituency for MPP. No other party did that for the MPP. No other constituency did that for the MPP. And I can pledge that we are going to do the same thing in 2024. The same thing. So, Bantma is going to be great. Bantma is going to be great. And Bantma is going to remain and continue to be the rising city on the hill. The rising city on the world. Thank you very much and God bless you all. So, the member of parliament for Bantma constituency. Francis Asam Asan Subwache has been re-elected as parliamentary candidate for the new patriotic party and what you heard here, there was his victory speech here at Bantuma Cultural Center. He is flanked by his wife and other members of the campaign team and they are very excited about the victory they have today and he's marching all of them outside and from the information I'm getting the excitement in the party will continue elsewhere within the Bantama constituency. We will continue to um, be within the premises of the cultural center where the election itself took place and we update you on what happens here subsequently. From Bantama constituency for Joy News, my name is Nanaya Ojima. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mamayao. Let's now, at least uh, that point being made by Francis Asensu Bwache, first time that they have retained a member of parliament. They, there's always a change on the fan belt. But let's head now to Botiano Inglishi, a man from Sylvester Tete. Uh, my colleague, Sweetie Abochi, had an interaction with him just a few days ago, and he was very expectant that he would be retained. My colleague, Maxwell Agbagba, is on the ground. Maxwell, what is the picture? What is happening in Botiano Inglishi, a man from? Hello, Maxwell. Yeah. Maxwell, if you can hear me, I'm asking, what is the latest development in that constituency? Uh, uh, do you have any results to share with us? Yes, Benjamin. So um, the voting just ended here in the Portiano English Mountain. Um, there you go, say. Um, there have been a lot of jubilation and celebration yeah, for um, the supporters of the incumbent member um, of parliament for this area, Sylvester so um, Tete, who, um, uh, I mean, from the record and from what you've seen, um, is the winner um, of this particular context um, in this consistency. Um, I've seen the final collation um, sheet. The ECs have put it one and two together, but the jubilation, you know, is continuing um, on updated. Earlier, I uh, spoke to him, and he said that he's very excited that he's gone on uh, this particular collation. But coming in prior to the concept, um, they thought that he was going to win, um, especially because Senior executives and all the Apache as executives here in this constituency. We're not um, in support of this candidate. He talks about machinations against um, his candidates. So he's particularly excited that against all odds, he's been able to um, retain um, the. Um, then he can be, you know, and represent me and in this in the 2024 election. Now, Benjamin, uh, this Maxwell, like, so we can hear only snippets of what you're sharing. We'll try to reconnect with you so we, that we can get a clearer picture of what is going on in Botiano Englishi Amanfu. But also here in the crowd, let's go over to Domikwa Benya, uh, that thorny situation. Sarah Jua Safo uh, locking horns with uh, Mike Okwe Jr. Samuel Mbura is on hand. Uh, Mbura, there was a time when we, you started speaking, we couldn't get much. So if you could just go back and walk us through what exactly has happened in Domi we would be grateful. Samuel. Yeah, Benjamin, um, I earlier indicated that um, this constituency is um, the constituency with the highest number of uh, voters 
uh, in the MPP election and also nationally. They boast um, about over 180,000 uh, when it comes to the national election. When it comes to the MPP internal elections, about 1,840 are expected to cast their ballots. Uh, right now, we don't know the exact number that have cast their ballots, but at the moment, they are done with the voting and the sorting is currently underway, heavily guided by the Ghana Police Service. They've taken charge of the security arrangement. But I must say, it has been an incident-free um, exercise so far since morning, although they did not start early. They started around 7.20 because there were delays in uh, the, the arrival of some of the materials and, and all that. But, uh, but, but what I can say is that voting has ended. We had the national chairman, Steve Ayesu in team, coming to visit here, and he's still here. He engaged the three aspirants, uh, Sarah Ajua Safo, Mike Okwe Jr., the uh, current uh, CEO of the Ghana Free Zones Authority, and then another big weight or heavyweight coming from the um, the first lady's office. She is uh, uh, Sheila uh, Sachi. Uh, she's actually um, a, a lawyer by profession and a development consultant. So these are the three people slagging it out there. But it is actually an atmosphere of uncertainty here. Although some of the aspirants, I mean, some of the delegates are of the view that Sarah Joa Safu has uh, outlived her work as a member of parliament because of the issues that happened some about a year ago, uh, duties in office and all matters that came out and then the party, the party felt she had, uh, I mean, neglected the party for her own interest and all that. Some people are riding on that to punish her. Uh, others also think that, fine, we can give or bring a new face to lead the constituency, but they are not specific, although the majority I've spoken to are pointing to, um, I mean, Michael um, Okwe Jr., who's the, whom they said has already contested in the previous election. They think that he's also committed and can lead a party. But elections are full of surprises, so anything can actually uh, happen. We also know that one of the critical factors that played for Sarah Joseph in the previous election had to do with the Kennedy Japan factor. We know he was in this constituency. He was able to uh, talk to some delegates and then she won that election just by eight votes against Mike Okwe Jr. And here's the case. He's not here to campaign fiscally and some are pointing fingers that that is likely to affect her. So these are the interpretations so far being read out there. These are the projections people are making. Uh, but I must say the general feeling is that it's like the people, the, the odds are going up against the current MP. But I said elections are not absolute until the results are declared. So we are waiting patiently for them to finish the sorting. Although as they do the sorting, I can see that some of the, the supporters of the aspirants are giggling and then raising their hands in anticipation of uh, jubilation and, uh, and victory. But at the moment, uh, they are still sorting. Uh, after that, the counting will continue and then the declaration uh, would be made. But the tension is not that uh, heavy here. People are going about doing their usual activities whilst putting their ears and eyes on what the outcome of the results uh, will be. So Benjamin, for now, what I can report is that the voting has ended. Sorting is underway in Ghana's populous constituency, Domi Kobinya. We are waiting for the declaration of the results by the Electoral Commission of Ghana. But the national chairman himself is here in the constituency waiting for this declaration to be made. That, that is Samuel Mbura on the ground in Domi Kwabinya bringing us the latest from there. Uh, in a short bit, I'll give you some of the details uh, that we're getting, some of the results we're getting from different constituencies. But for now, uh, Yendi, which has the member of parliament uh, uh, in the person of Farouk Aliou Mahama, is boiling. There is some chaos there. Let's cross over and have an interaction with my colleague Martina Bugri. Martina, what exactly has been happening in Yendi? Now the elections has been disrupted. They started counting after sorting out and then they had gone 226 for the incumbent MP. One of the guys of the his opponent jumped into the center where the counting was being done and accused a young man or the EC official who was holding the my the papers of a um, Abiba Tani mm. that he was having indelible ink in his hand and he was deliberately spoiling her papers. While that confrontation was going on, others joined him. They took over the 
ballot papers for Farouk. They destroyed everything, vandalized the place, and as far as beating up the EC officer who was doing the counting, some mm. media uh, persons were also attacked in the process. Currently, we have moved from the Yendi Senior High School, where the election was taking place, to the police station, where the police officers and some people uh, they had picked are currently in the bus. They are being stopped from exiting out of the bus. The police station, people are beginning to march up there, and there's a fear that probably there will be some attacks in the city. So you're telling me that, uh, just to ensure that I got everything correctly, the counting for Farouk Ali Mahama had hit 226. Then one, someone from the sh uh, sh um, Abibata, Shani Abibata's camp uh, yes. felt that this EC official was using indelible ink to spoil her votes. And so he jumped on this person. Others jumped in uh, and, and they beat up this EC official and some media people have also been beaten up. That's what you're saying. That's exactly what happened. So as we speak now, we have all moved to the um, police station. We do not know what's going to happen from here, but that's where the media team is seeking rest. So where were the police officers when all of this was happening? Uh, the police officers were there. They tried to stop them. But it looks like they overpowered them, even though they had the numbers. And they jumped in, went, decided to destroy whatever they came across. They even moved the police officers to their vehicle. There was this back and forth. The police officers didn't have arms, so there was nothing like firing to scare anybody. And so that probably could be one of the reasons why they overpowered them. Well, of course, we wouldn't want any firing in any uh, instance, but, but, but thank you very much. So as, as of now, uh, there's a standoff. Counting is not going on. We don't know what the situation is, and definitely there are no results to be declared. Uh, yes, uh, I mean, for now, they have destroyed the ballot papers, so there's nothing to even count. They, they've destroyed all the ballot papers? Yes. They destroyed the ballot papers, so there's nothing to count. Uh, have you seen uh, Farouk Ali Muhammad or any of his representatives uh, in, in, in that area? Uh, yes, for now, he moved with his team to the police station. I'm trying to get into the crowd to see if I'll be able to have access to him so that we can have a conversation. You do that, but, but do clarify for me, how many delegates voted here? I didn't get that. H how many delegates were there voting in Yendi? 790 people, but we are told that seven passed on, and so they were left with 783 who were supposed to do the voting today. 782. 83. 83. Yes. Well, Martina, I'll leave you for now till you can get maybe the member of parliament, Farouk Ali Mahama, or members of his team so we can have an interaction and find out what exactly, uh, what the sentiments are on this. Martina Bugri reporting live from Yendi, where I reiterate, uh, voting had been concluded. Uh, there was some sort of uh, sorting or counting going on. And then one of those in Shani Abibate's camp uh, said that he suspected. When? At the point when uh, Farouk Ali Mahama had already counted, those counting for him had counted 226 votes, this person said he had seen that the EC official counting for Shani Abibata was using indelible ink to destroy. You know, once there's another marking, it is deemed invalid. Destroy the votes of Shani Abibata. So he pounced on him. Others followed suit. They beat this EC official. Uh, I don't know whether to say to a pulp, but they also attacked members of the media. And the police officers tried their best, but they were overwhelmed by the situation and they had to step aside. According to Martina Bugri, what she's been telling us, the ballots have been completely destroyed. So that means that in Yendi, we're not going to be getting the figures anytime uh, soon. There may have to be another election uh, there. Let me come into the studio briefly before we continue on this journey. Um, are, there, are there some other results, though, that we are seeing here? If you look at Ibrim in the eastern region, interesting situation there. Uh, I see John Osei from Pong with 116 votes. Charles. Uh, Oredu with 192 votes, and then Frank uh, Ahima Reku with 148. The least contender, Daniel, with 56. So all of them in the hundreds, a keen uh, contest 
there. We also have some results coming through from Prue West, uh, another interesting one. Honorable Stephen Jalula, uh, you know him, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, 336 votes. These are provisional for now. Honorable uh, Idris Garba, 80. And the total votes cast 416. So uh, that makes for interesting uh, reading as well. Uh, then there's also Sunyani West in the Bono uh, region. Uh, Ignatius Bafo, a Wua, 660. Then you have Amma Frimpoma, uh, 244. And then Mubarak Abdullah, 75. So a landslide victory for Ignatius Bafo, a Wua. I wanted to come back. I didn't want to forget this. Yes. In Bantama, because Bantama is crucial. There's a reason your party members call it Florida. That's in the so. Ashanti region. That is so. One, Francis Asensu Boache, the, 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 you know, axe hanging over his head mm. of Kennedy in Japan. Now, does this erode Kennedy's power within the MPP? Two, there's this bit about camping that has been in there. Mm. I mean, on D-Day, you say people are praying, coming together to pray. Is that not, is that not, does not, that not contravene what your party has been saying. Uh, j just your thoughts on that, and then I'll take you to Dobby Yeah, right certainly. Now. Camping is not um, a right thing to do, and that's why there's a rule that you shouldn't camp people, because you deprive the other candidates of the opportunity to liaise and hobnob with um, the, the delegates. But the, the victor, Francis Asensu Wache, from, from all intents and, to all intents and purposes, uh, this is what happened. What then happens? It appears they do this and get away with it. The party says, but they do it and get away with it. Well, if you look at it, if the evidence is conclusive, they know there's no reactions to take. But I'm afraid um, I don't know the nature of the campaign, especially mm. on the D-Day, the, the, the very, very, very moment that we believe, I mean, people should be free to do what is, is important. If somebody prevents the other, for, exam for example, talking to them or doing something else, then it, at least might be desired. Mm. I don't have all the facts. But it's a principle that we should all uphold. Mm. Yeah. Let me take you to Dominic Kwabinya. Of course, uh, 180,000 nationally, and you have 840 delegates of the MPP in that constituency. If, if you lose your grip on Dominic Kwabinya, it could go uh, terrible for your party, both on the presidential and parliamentary level. You have Michael Kwe, who has tried for this seat, mm. time without number, in the last election, losing by, what, a paltry eight votes mm. or so, versus Esara Adwasafo, whom some say has lost her grip uh, because of the incidents surrounding. I don't want to go into all that. What is your reading of that, that constituency? And do you think maybe it is time for Sarah Dwasafo to step aside? Well, from the way I see it, I, I never even thought that Adwa was going to go. You didn't think Sarah Dwasafo no, would go? I, I never thought she was going to go because of, if you like, the background uh, matters we know. And I thought maybe she's even giving up and she's ended this her career as an MP. But she decided to go. But, but, but wait, wait. You say she should have, maybe you expected her to hang her boots. But guess what? When she returned after everything that had happened, your party, you accepted her, brought her back into parliament, and made her a deputy chair of a very powerful you know, committee, constitutional, legal, um, and parliamentary affairs. You made her deputy. What, what, what did that mean? Because that is different from she being the most credible parliamentary candidate for uh, 2024, because for all you know, because of the hung parliament, uh, that could be uh, a note of um, confidence that, look, with this legal work, which she has the expertise because she's a lawyer of some repute, she could do it. But that, that dimension does not translate in uh, making her the, um, uh, member, uh, the parliamentary candidate for 2024. Uh, they, they are two different issues altogether. And you know what it is like. That Look, um, right. do not abandon your mm. parliamentary work. If, if you may, just give me a little bit of time. Uh, Ayawasu Central, where we actually find ourselves now, uh, the MP, Henry Kwate, is speaking. Let's find out what he has to say. And report we have not won elections. The MPP is not in charge. We have a serious agenda ahead of us. That agenda is to put into the political agenda so by the grace of God, the MPP takes the street by breaking the eight. This is my focus. And so I want to invite all my cross, all the 
It's a young man. It's okay to also try and assess the boss. And I admire him for that. But um, we have we have an agenda. And so as early as next week, I will do my best to start bringing all the people together so we can have a united Iowa system to have, inshallah, for 2024 elections. All right. So uh go on then. Well, uh, welcome back. That was uh, Ayawasu Central Member of Parliament, also the Greater Accra Regional Minister, Henry Kwate. Uh, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Moses Abbo, and there were issues of accreditation here and there. Interestingly, I saw uh, Titus Glover in the, in the background there. But, but what did you make of the situation with accreditation and some strong-armed tactics from Henry Kwate? Yes, you see, the accreditation bit is not too important for the actual delegates who are supposed to vote. So some people might want to come and stampede the process by saying that we want to be part of those who are accredited to be in the critical area where the action is taking place. And that could create confusion. Mm -hmm. Because you see, if you are a delegate, you are known, and you may probably have your tag. You could just walk in there, they take you, go and vote. But those who are vying for accreditation, so they'll be the circumference of the voting, may cause mayhem. Mm -hmm. And the question is the question that, please, you will not be given the accreditation and you will hear the results uh, later in time. That should not disturb you mm. because you are not going to vote. So why is this right. not rush for accreditation? A quick one though, Yendi. Mm. Yendi mm. is boiling. And you heard that situation. Um, the, the voting, the counting of votes has stopped, come to a standstill. EC official attacked, media people attacked, police made to step aside. What do you make of that situation? Because initially we also saw footage of um, TV sets, you know, smart TV sets with the pictures of the member of parliament, Farouk Aliou Mohammed, and all of that. It appears you have quite a problem on your hands in Yendi. I think so. This is something that at least expected from that constituency. And mayhem should never be part of our politics, especially when we are voting. And um, I think they should look into this matter critically they should see whether there was a security breach because people should respect the police with the greatest of respect. There's nowhere in this world that the police is present and people can visit mayhem on a situation. If it is an um, electoral commission official who is being um, I mean, a criminal trying to destroy somebody's um, um, uh, chances of winning, there's a way to deal with the matter. But when ordinary uh, um, civilians take over a process of this nature, you should look at it from every dimension, especially if there was a security lapse of one kind or the other. Mm. And, and we're getting some interesting reports because one of the media people assaulted is claiming, and, and this is a claim for now, but, but it, there is a claim uh, that he was actually assaulted by uh, Farouk Aliou Mahama himself. Of course, we'll have to establish that. Uh, but that is what our correspondent is uh, reporting as of now in respect of that incident. I did tell you that in Yendi, um, media people had also been uh, assaulted. Uh, th that is the situation. Uh, Very there. distasteful. Mm -hmm. you see the so, so if this is confirmed, I mean, what does this mean? W what actions does the party take when, when these things happen? A sitting member of parliament, if it is established that he assaulted a media person and, and this, all of this has happened, I mean, what do you make of it? That would be very serious because even that is in the criminal books, you know, if you went ahead and did what is being attributed to him. But let the whole drama unfold and be able to get a grip of it. But I will tell you that it is very unfortunate. It should be incident free. And this is what we are expecting for the general election. That it should be as simple like you going to dial, uh, I mean, some, uh, calling somebody on mobile phone, it's a, it's a dial away. Going to vote is just going to put your. Your, 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 your thumb on a, a paper, and then we walk off. We should never have violence associated with our democratic decisions. I, but I'm asking your party structures, what happens to such people? It, it, it doesn't matter whose ox is gone, what happens? There definitely should be disciplinary action if the evidence is conclusive that somebody might have engineered the mayhem. Nobody should applaud this. I mean, nobody should say that, oh, it is all right. 
it doesn't speak very well of us. Mm. And the entire nation as well. Well, uh, from what we hear uh, in the Subing constituency, parliamentary candidate lawyer Kofi Obri uh, Yeboa has been uh, speaking. Ignatius Bafwewa, I already mentioned that in Sunyani mm. uh, West, we also know of the Adanse Asokwa uh, situation. In fact, when it also comes to Inshaya, so Dr. Stephen Amwa, uh, the, the declaration of results 650 uh, there, 78.22. Uh, percent, but but I'll get into those figures uh, later. I think I may I may need to refer to uh, those that I have uh, on the other uh, term. There are other interesting constituencies for which um, we'll be looking at. Uh, at least we've seen in Bantama, we've seen mm. in Shiaosu, we've seen at Dansia Sokwa, mm. uh, and a few others. But there are some we've also seen in Sawam Edwajiri. Very in, very interesting. In the Frank Anodompe, very, actually, very. I expected that. It was a beat slide. down. Oh yes, you expected, expected that. Oh yes. He's a huge figure of our party, to be mm. very honest. A hard-working, I mean, leader of uh, our group. I was sometimes surprised that a man like this should be challenged. I don't believe in some of these wholesale, I mean, um, uh, primaries. Like, but, but, but it's a democratic process. Well, a, a democratic process that works against you, ultimately, injurious to the process, is, is not the best. You see, this omnibus thinking that, oh, when it's democracy, let's go and vote, you know? I mean, you should look at it again because you need some strategic people which ultimately will kneel to your benefit. And mm. I believe another on prayer is one of them. Very good, hardworking individual. That I believe that the sea should have a ring fence for him. When you look, go to the eastern region, Ebuakwa South, uh, Kingsley, Germany, uh, 563, uh, Gloria, Ofori, Wedu, uh, Paltry, 29. And that was also another uh, beat down, akin to your constituency. Akin. Not the same, but akin uh, to your constituency. So it looks like a beat down there of Gloria Ofuri uh, Buedu in there. And uh, taking a look at other results, let's look at the one from Ayawaso Central in the Great Accra region. Of course, uh, you would find Henry Kwati there with 594 of the valid votes cast. And of course, uh, Moses Abo with 326, a total of 920 uh, votes cast. Are you surprised that the inroads that Moses Abo made? I mean, it's over what, 268, 269, but, but it's still getting 326 votes. It, it, it paints a picture, right? It does. And um, uh, it gets to a point that you realize that uh, those who are making their debut or they've tried it before, will be will each close. Mm. But bear in mind also that this individual called uh, Henry, Henry Corte is not um, featherweight at Yeah, all. but some have said that he's not necessarily performed, apart from his bit about, you know, cleaning Accra and all of that, which has waned, by the way, and Accra is still not the cleaner city in Africa, uh, that apart from that, there's nothing to show. You see, you see, what, what is the consequence of having performed or not having performed? People believe that when you become a minister, the resources of Ghana are yours. You can go into your backyard and turn it into Great Britain. It's sad. Some people don't understand what it is to be in government and what you can do and what you cannot do. So I'm afraid uh, people have huge expectations. Some people believe that when you get a minister, then all the problems in your constituency will be solved in a day. It's far from that. It's not logical at all. In Pru West, uh, I believe I went there uh, once. Uh, so we have Stephen Jalula with 336 of those valid votes. Uh, Idris Garba with 80. The total votes cast 416. Kweun Prayeso constituency, we have Honorable Davis Opoku Ansa. Uh, we all know him as APK, 470 of those votes. Then Dr. Yao Trinifor, 163, rejected six. Total uh, ballot cast 641 out of some 668 delegates. Uh, we'll keep bringing you the latest that we have. You're still live on your election headquarters right here on uh, Joy News. It's brought to you, uh, this coverage is brought to you courtesy of Petrosol, your clean fuel in full uh, quality.
quantity. So we'll try to get uh, the feed from other constituencies. Dominic Kwabenya is still on our radar. We are waiting for sorting, counting uh, to be done. But another interesting constituency here in the Greater Accra region, one of the places that you would want to know that if a party is winning, it also points in a certain direction, both as, as parliamentary, at the parliamentary level, and at the presidential level. Able Kuma, West, and we, you know why I'm going there. Ursula Owusu Ekufu, uh, throwing down Kwesi Neko, uh, 817 to 241 uh, votes. That's a beat down of almost 600 votes by way of a difference. Um, how, how good are you, a friend, to Ursula Owusu Ekufu? Uh, she's a, a bit of a character. <laughs> uh, yes, a bit of a character. Oh my God! And of course, you see her a lot. If if it's not about the former president, you see her a lot on the LGBT uh, matters as as well. But what do you make of this? Quite a stamp of approval. Yes. Uh, if you ask me, her intellectual bent is amazing. That's, that that's the dimension I love about her. She mm. has a strong mental capacity. And I think she's also forthright. But a lot of things can be said about a politician. Sometimes mm. your forthrightness mm. uh, could be interpreted as arrogance, you know, quarrelsome, the rest of it. It's all a way to look at a personality. But the net, the net effect is that she's a good brain and we can always use her for good results. If there are any things that we want to look at again concerning her, I mean, it can be overhauled. I don't think ultimately uh, she's a washout. I don't believe so. Okay. Yes. So a, a major uh, plus. We, we know that she'll be going back uh, to Parliament. To At least she'll House. be contesting yes. uh, in the 2024 elections. Uh, let, let me just run this by you, though. When you look at the way things are heading, and, and I've told you that already big wigs in government are losing, mm. and maybe as we approach the fourth hour, We'll get to see more of those who have lost. I don't know what credibility that gives or takes away from your party uh, heading into election 2024. 20, uh, Another constituency we, we just might be taking a look at uh, is Wei Jagbawe, you know, the, the tenant landlady yes, yes. Uh, situation, Tina Mensa. And uh, as and when we are ready to cross over there, we'll do that. But any quick thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've even gotten a hint that she's lost. Tina Benson. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And we'll be, we'll, we'll be giving confirmations on that shortly. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. All right. So we'll give you more information as and when uh, we have it. And here we go. Here we go. Here we have it. Uh, Great Accra, Wei Jagbawe. And uh, these are the figures to look at. Uh, you see Tina G. Na Ayele Mensa a.k.a. the landlady, with 361 of those valid votes cast, and Jerry Ahmed Shaib with 786. This is a monumental beatdown. Indeed, the tenant <laughs> has taken out the landlady. That is the tale of the tape there. 1,147 oh uh, votes there, total valid votes, total oh. rejected votes for... And the total votes are there, 1,151. 786 to 361. <laughs> right. And so that is the latest as far as Wei Jagbawe is, uh, is concerned. Did you see this coming? Tina I mean, I've been in that constituency reporting on a few things in yes, the past. I, 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 I'm, I'm, Even if she would lose, not by this margin. It's, it's huge. And you have been very Shakespearean for the first time here. I, Monumental Vita, <laughs> like writing poetry, you know. But let me tell you something that is about this whole business of politics. Sometimes you can't be sure. I've seen some. Goes back to Sir John. If you yeah, 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 yeah. You can't be sure. Maybe, I mean, you are thinking that you are in charge, but maybe they resent you for the passion. And because the secret ballot, they were, they, it will show. So no, no, but Tina Menza has had a grip on this constituency. Oh, yes. And she, she's, she's owned it. Yes, it's yes. surprising that, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. if, if she would lose, yes. not by... Yes, yes, it's yes, it's yes. a margin of about, what, 400 plus votes. There's a... There's a, there's a pen about 425 votes, from, for, if my mathematics are correct. That, that's indicative of a pent-up anger against her that she never realized. 
Because mm. you see, the votes reflect how they see you, how they feel about you, and how they think about you. And you can't, you, you can't do anything about it. So the vote is registering something strong mm. against my dear lady, and it's unfortunate. I just, I just saw a text that she's taking it in a stride. Right. That is all life is about. Okay. We've got to move on. Yeah. Move on, we shall. We'll, we'll come back to you. Let's head to Ablikuma West now. I was, I was talking about that constituency a short while ago. The EC is declaring uh, Ursula Osu Ekofu. Let's, let's cross over. And uh, these are the, the statistics so far. Now, the general turnout. We had in the register the total number of de delegates is 1,108. Delegate number, 1,108. Now, number that turned out to vote is 1,078. 1,078. So in percentage terms, it is 97.2% turnout. Now, let's take the, number, the vote obtained by each of these candidates. Candidate number one, Asla Gifti Ousu Ekufu, had 817, 817 votes. Candidate number two, Roni Kwesi Noko, had 241, 241. Now, so candidate elect is Madam Esla Ousu Ekufu. If she is here, please. She should, she should come. So vote of team, 817 out of valid votes of 1,058. So by the power vested in me as a municipal electoral officer and on behalf of the electoral commission, I declare Asla Ousu Ekufu. Parliamentary candidate elect for Ablek Kuma West. Thank you and God bless you all. Well, that's the latest from there. And uh, I'm still trying to confirm this, uh, but uh, we're gathering information that in the Subin constituency, more bigwigs are uh, falling. It appears your deputy is not in the best of shape right now. At all. Your deputy is also bleeding, eh? Oh, my God, and King. <laughs> <laughs> I never expected that they would treat him this way. And why not? You just said it. Delegates are very fickle, <laughs> and it depends on what they are looking for. And what? especially if you are rolling over, oh they may opt God. for another person in, in your state. Oh, my God. That's a huge disappointment. Mm. But what I know for sure, that uh, if they are, uh, they, there's not an untoward, you take it in your stride. Mm. And you never abandon your loyalty to the party. And that you put all your resources behind the flag bearer so we break the ink. This is the advice I'll give. As for pain, it's part of humanity. If you've never been pained before, you are in the cemetery. And mm. I'm sure if you people, I, I don't know about what the dead are doing there, you know. But I could assure you that pain is part of life. Mm. So you take it in your stride, not lose your sense of where we are going as a party, and give your, your best to the party. It is not only in parliament that you can function for the party and the government. That's my sense of it. All right, we're crossing over to now to Wage Bawe. And of course, the tenant who has uprooted <laughs> the landlady. Uh, let, let's cross over there. Kenneth JC is on hand. Uh, that is the uh, newly elected uh, MP to a uh, newly elected parliamentary candidate of the New Patriotic Party in the Wage Bawe constituency. Uh, the uh, chief executive officer of Coastal Development Authority Ahmed uh, Jerry, who has just unseated the incumbent MP Tina Mensa, who is also the Deputy Minister for Health. Ahmed, you're live on Joy News. Share a few words with us. You are very emotional. Congratulations, uh, first of all. Thank you. Very What's going through your mind? 
It's not been an easy fight. It's been a very tough one. And uh, I, I just thank God for helping me through. And most importantly, thank each and every polling station executive that made this a reality. So, yeah, it hasn't been an easy task, really. You, you got over 300 of the delegates voting for the incumbent MP, Tina Mensah. That means that she still has some support in the constituency. How are you going to ensure that now that you've won, you're going to bring them on board for the bigger picture? She's, she's, she's not... Um, I, I would not want to say she's, she, she's, she's a big person in this, in, this, in this contest. So to come from behind... And, and Ghana this number of votes, it rather means I've done well. So I'm, not, I'm kind of surprised that you're not actually looking at how many votes I made as compared to, how many, as, as compared to how many people voted against me, if you, if, if you so wish to describe it like that. I, I think that it wasn't an easy contest. And, and she's not uh, a little girl in this contest, you know. So whatever it is, we, we did our part. What is more important is that she, she has to be on board. And it would take me to get her to be on board. And it would take the council, it would take the polling station executives for us all to be on board. So whichever way it is, we all have to work for the new patriotic party. And especially against the backdrop that we want to break the eight. So, yeah, I'll definitely call on her and, and have a, a very beautiful chat and to see how best we can work together. Thank you very much. So that is the newly elected parliamentary candidate of the MPP in the uh, Bawe, Wejak Bawe constituency here in the Greater Accra region, Jerry Ahmed, who has just unseated the incumbent MP, Tina Mensa, who is also the Deputy uh, Minister for Health. Uh, so there you have in your shot. She left quite early. She left about 30 minutes before the uh, results were declared, but Jerry supporters started jubilating even before the declaration uh, was made. And you can see scores of supporters of Jerry still standing around, hanging around to congratulate the newly elected parliamentary candidate heading into the 2024 elections on December 7th, Benjamin. Tale of the tape from uh, Weija uh, Bowie constituency. Tina Mensa is not going to stand in the name of the new patriotic party. There's a new face, a new kid on the block, if you like. He's in the person of Jerry Ahmed. Uh, this is someone you, you, you know, in a way, right? Yes, I know him very well. First of all, he has this calm disposition, affable man. And he has a task, you know. When you have... Uh, and, and we saw that calm disposition. Oh, yes, yes, yes. One yes. thing I liked, how he said, very calm about what it would take to bring Tina Mensa back into the fold. But because, uh, like Kenneth said, 30 minutes to the declaration, she left. Well, obviously, she's not comfortable with the outcome. Mm. But when the nerves are relaxed and he should retire, one thing is at stake, that we break the eight. If you want to break the eight... Your pride or your hate um, does not matter. What matters is what is the ultimate benefit of getting um, Dr. Baumia as president. If you look at that. So you go back and bond. That is what I believe all those who have lost and those who have won, they should have a bonding. You got all the supporters of the one who won will matter in the arithmetic. And all the supporters of those who lost will matter in the arithmetic. It is that kind of unity of purpose which will tip into the 50 plus one and you have a president from your party again. Mm. So we shouldn't be that kind of um, individuals that we believe we've, we've won primaries and that's the end of it. We should be those individuals who cross to the other side and get the loser uh, to, to partner with you so the numbers will go up. Mm. <clears throat> I'm still looking at Anyasa Utwom. Uh, and my, my own friend, uh, Dr. Adomaku Kisi, um, and uh, as well as Professor Nyako in the Kwadaso constituency to see how uh, things actually pan out in those areas, those constituencies. At least we know that for Botiano English, uh, Sylvester Tete, 
has actually yes. made it through. Eshle Usu Ekofu has made it through. Katie Amand has made it through. Mm. Anansi Asokwa, uh, Francis Asenso Boache, among others. Uh, th there's also this bit I wanted to quickly run by you. Two bits. Mm. Money and violence in our politics. They are becoming synonymous with Ghanaian politics, no matter the level. Now, even at the local government, you know, local governance or the local elections, it is creeping there. You have people cooking. There was a lady, the local elections, who cooked, and, and people didn't come. All sorts of influence, money and violence, like you just saw in Yendi. Uh, what do you make of it? How, how do we it's a, it's do a very, away with this? It's a very wretched development of our body politic, and we should look at it. In the first instance, you know, I am of the view that people should have reverence for the police. Mm. In any way in the world, when you see police presence, then all your funny things should be checkmated. You don't have to go there. But when we know that we have the security personnel around, and we ignore uh, the power of the police, or even if it were soldiers, then there's a total uh, a law and order breakdown which portends ill for a nation. So I am of the view that we should, we should respect the police and the police should be strong on the ground as well. If they should see any form of violence trying to raise ugly heads, they should be able to arrest it and deal with it. It shouldn't come to a point in which somebody is bold to go and take a whole ballot box, destroy it totally, beat up an EC official. Who is up with us? With, with a claim that the member of parliament assaulted a journalist. Yes, a claim. It was a claim. Mm. Yes. And what? I'm being very careful. Yes, I'm choosing equally. my words equally. carefully. When it's confirmed, then we, yes, can, we can declare. And, and, mm. and also, I mean, if it's, it's a journalist, and the journalist, journalist has been beaten up. But my problem is this Do you have the police protecting or providing security? You should look at it. It's very important. And, and, and how do you feel, though? I mean, the police are not armed, and I feel it is, it is justified. But, well, but, depending on the sensitivity mm. of the area, we've got mm. one shot is sufficient to tame a wild dog. We are aware. You see, so if the police did not have understanding of the terrain and the propensities of the people in the area, for me, it's a security breach. Understand? Mm. Because if you said you, were, you went there with bare hands, knowing that these pockets of violence are... Are, are, are notorious in certain areas. They should be well prepared so that nobody, I mean, takes the law into his own hands. But for money, my dear brother and friend, um, I don't know how to start and end. It's a huge concern. Somebody asked me that, how, what do you say about vote buying? And all this thing about TNT and everything and in between. It. Because a lot of them buy votes claiming it is TNT. You go and look in there. I mean, people have wads of cash, thousands of CDs, 2,000. Someone is giving 200. Another person is giving 500. So is it vote buying or cash demanding? You should look at it too. I mean, it's always a it, give it, and take it, situation. It, it, if, if you have a scenario in which nobody wants money, but they are looking at values, and they are bright man, a man with competence to aid us when it's parliament, a man who is development oriented. You understand? Would they say that, I mean, we want money and then you get in there to help us? So we shouldn't just sit down and say that, oh, somebody is buying vote because some people are actually mm -hmm. demanding. It's something that is a, is a two way thing that we should all look at critically. If we are not careful, then you lose the fact that, oh, uh, somebody mm. wants to come and use money to buy a seat in parliament. Right. But for all you care to know, there is some hungry man somewhere who believes that this is cocoa season. And if you, if you didn't give him anything, probably will not vote for you. This phenomenon. It's a demand and supply situation. Yeah. We've created a demand. It's something that is also um, uh, cast across the political divide. If you, if you pay the regard to what happened to the N NDC, a parliamentary primaries recently. I have friends in there who also complain about this terrible phenomenon. Okay, uh, le le let me pardon my interjection here. One constituency that a lot of you, via the live feed and others, you are calling for, Domi Kwabenya, there just, just might be a surprise uh, for you. But let's not call it. Let's, uh, we'll be crossing over there shortly. Uh, the declaration is about to be made there in Domi Kwabenya. You know, it's a straight fight between Sarah Adwa Safo 
uh, some call her the returnee. And, of course, there is also Mike Okwe uh, Jr. Samuel Lumbura is on the ground. We'll be connecting with him shortly to tell us what exactly uh, is happening in that constituency, as and when we have him uh, for the declaration. But what are your expectations? I'm seeing something already, but I, can't, I cannot announce yet. I'll let Samuel Lumbura do that. What are your expectations? Sarah Adwasa for Mike Okwe Jr. What, what are you expecting? My dear brother and friend, I can't be too sure. Right. You know, because of the fact that... Uh, the dynamics on the ground mm. will change overnight. Okay. So I'll just abide what you've received and then we'll see how we move on. Because All right. Very strategic constituency. Mm. We shouldn't toy with it. All right. So here we are. Uh, there, there are quite some things that are emanating, uh, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll cross over now to Samuel Umbura. I've seen some figures. I'll, I'll like us to hear from the horse's own mouth. Samuel Umbura, Could over to you. Um, what, are, what is the picture in Domi Kwabinya? The polling station A in the Dom Kobia constituency is that um, Mike Okwe Jr. has 569 votes. Sarah Ajuasafu had 102 votes. The third candidate, Chilla uh, Opon, had 113 votes. So this is the provisional results that we have in the polling station A. We are waiting for the polling station B. Then we can add. But what I can say is that with the provisional results that we have, Michael Okwe Jr. is leading the race with over 569 votes so far as the provisional results we have here can confirm. We are waiting patiently for the uh, EC to, to do that. But there's already some powder being put on Michael Okwe Jr. here. He's already been, um, I mean, uh, he's already been cheered up here. Honorable, what, what, what information are you getting? What information are you getting? What information are you getting, Honorable? From police station A, we can see that you are leading. Tell us, what is your information giving you? Honorable. So, uh, Benjamin, I have um, Mr. Okwe Jr. here. So, uh, Honorable. It's okay. It's okay. It's only one of us. Okay. okay, so it's quite noisy here. Honorable, um, we are seeing that your supporters are cheering you up. What do we know? What do we know, Honorable? Jr. And the provisional result. All right, so the police are somehow apprehensive here. They are asking the media to move out of the, uh, the, the barricaded area. But what I can say is that so far, so far, uh, they, they, they are pouring powder on um, okay, Junior here. Uh, with the provisional results are coming in. But the police will not allow us into the uh, inner parameters of the, 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 I mean, the voting center here where the coalition is uh, underway. But like I said, the provisional results is pointing out to a uh, a win for Mike Okwe Jr. He has 569 as against Adjua Safu, who is the incumbent, 102. Even the third force, Sheila Opong, had 113 uh, votes there. So that's what we have from the police station uh, A there. So let me try and get closer to uh, Mike Okwe Jr. to uh, talk to us on, on this. I, he's addressing the media briefly. Uh, he's talking to some of my colleagues, but the police will not allow us to go. The place is actually choked. They wouldn't allow us to go. But let me just get to him. Honorable. So what did you tell, what did you tell the delegates for them to be convinced this much? Uh, first of all, so what uh, did you tell the delegates this time around? First of all, I want to start by saying thank you to God because I know this battle belongs to God. I don't want to say too much, but I believe it is God who helped to win this election. I want to say a big thank you to the delegates of Dome Kwabena. I want to tell them that I'm very grateful for the responsibility that they reposed in me. I want to thank my family, my father, my brothers for their support because that was very helpful as well. Are you overwhelmed by the votes? Are you overwhelmed by the votes? How will you describe the struggle to come this far? Um, the Electoral Commission is yet to announce the results. 
But all indications indicate that Mr. Mike Okoye Jr. has uh, won the election. So um, I'm getting the uh, other provisional results to conclude. Yeah, uh, Secretary, um, let me try and get the Secretary um, of the question. All right, Secretary, uh, can I have that? So, um, like I said, for the provisional results we have here, Honorable Michael Quay Jr. has won. This is, uh, this is the A, the, the zone A. So, uh, in total, uh, what we are getting here is that um, Michael Quay Jr., the first one he had 569, the second uh, followed by Sheila uh, Sechio Pong, 113, uh, Adwa Safu, 102, and then the next polling station, um, uh, the next police station he had 725, uh, 625. That's a uh, police station B. So uh, police station B, he has 625. Michael Quay Jr. Ajua has Safo has 226 in, in that particular. Uh, in, uh, I mean police station. Uh, um, the Sheila had 73. That the rejected ballots are four. So we are waiting for the original declaration so far. But let me talk to the, uh, the constituency secretary uh, on this issue. Uh, Mr. Chiolabi, you are live on Joy News. Tell us, what do you know? Um, basically, I'm excited. The Mekwabenya people have decided, delegates have de uh, listened to the local people. So I think we are going to break the eight. Um, out of 1,716 um, people who voted today, Michael Eronokwe had 1,194. 1,194. Honorable Ajasafu had 328. And Sheila Oponsechi had 186. It's a massive victory for the MPP. It's a massive victory for the MPP. Going forward, I think what we have to do as a party is to unite all of, all of them, the three candidates and their followers and we'll make sure we we'll break the eight. We'll make sure we retain our seat as a party in this country. Are you surprised about the change? I am not. Most radio stations that have uh, interviewed me during the week, that has been my message. We were expecting a change because the local people, the constituents themselves are fed up with the honorable member of parliament and that is what has been translated in this, in this vote that we're seeing today. And we thank everyone. We Why thank you all for coming. You know, what, what is, I am a leader. And a leader must show a way. So I was showing the people the right way to go. Because if the people at Dummy Market say they don't want her, they're hooting at us. What are you talking about? Leadership. What are you talking about? Neutrality. I want my party to win. So I have to listen to the grassroots. I am a delegate too. So I have to speak the minds of the grassroots. And that's what exactly I'm doing. What message really resonated with the delegates to do this change? The people say they don't like her again. If you bring her as a candidate, we'll vote against her. And that is what they listen to, and that's what exactly they have done. So what is the signal to the NDC? No, no. The constituents ask for a change before they can retain, they, they can retain us this seat. And we've given them the change they want. They asked for Michael Eronokwe, and we've delivered Michael Eronokwe. So we are asking every delegate, every party member, every supporter, whoever you are, come support MPP, break the eight, and we'll give you the development. I'm going to confirm that there were machinations to punish Ajua Safo for neglecting the party. It's a free and fair election. You've been here from morning, and you're talking about machination. There hasn't been any uh, protest or nothing. This is nothing to talk about. This is not machination. This is real election. Peaceful, free, and fair. Look at the margin in which she has lost. It's, it's, it's significant. It you that people have rejected you. It's as simple as ABCD. People have rejected you. So Benjamin, that is the constituency secretary, Chiofilos uh, Labi, talking to us there. Um, they, they are happy about the results. They say the defeat of Sarah Adjasafo has not actually come as a surprise because uh, they think that the people have spoken and that is the voice of the people. The next step is now to get into a 2024 general election and face the NDC. We are here to get a certified results from the Electoral Commission of Ghana. But as we speak now, Domi Kobia constituency is charged and then the MPP is sending their parliamentary candidates um, who has just been elected, um, Mike Okwe Jr., 
to his uh, residence. They are currently on the principal street of uh, around the atomic area there. The people are jubilant, but I can't see Sarah Ajuasafu around. Uh, <laughs> she has left here. I can't also see the other, as I mean, contender, Sheila uh, upon such. She's, she's over there. I I'll try and get to Sheila and then find out from her, but um, maybe some, some delegates too can also share with us what they make of this uh, whole um, election so far, whether they are satisfied with the outcome or not. But I must say, generally, the people are, 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 are not, uh, they, are, they are not surprised about the outcome. As I said earlier, uh, there were earlier indications that they wanted to punish Sarah Juasa for uh, neglecting uh, the party. So uh, that is the current situation that we, we have here. Um, I'll, I'll try and talk to some of the delegates around here and also get to Madam Sheila as well. Um, uh, let, let me try and get here. I'm here, I'm here honorable. So, all right, so let me get to talk to madam. Uh, I think this is my first time of talking to her. I came here in the morning. She wasn't ready. That's a, a spirited fight for the first time. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, and I thank God very much for everything. And I'd like to thank the electorates in Domekwa Benya. They've been very good, so I'm thankful. And, and I wish um, congratulations to Mr. Okwe. He's done very well, and... and um, we, we thank God for everything, and we'll be there. I'll be there to support him definitely. How do you feel? Um, I'm, 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 I'm grateful to God for bringing me this far in this journey. It's not been an easy journey, but God has been there. In one of the polling stations or the voting center, you beat Sarah Juasa for 113, and then she had 102. What, the, what does that mean? Well, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful to God at this point. So thank you very much. And so speak to the people of Dom Kobinia, speak to the delegates. What message do you have for them? Thank you very much, um, Dome Kwabinia and PP. I'm very grateful for your warm reception, for your kindness, and we live to fight another day. Thank you very much. I really wish you all the best. You had Sheila Opon, Sheila Opon Sechi there, telling us that she has um, she has accepted the results she will support um she will support um, the, the candidate elect but let me just talk to some of the, de the delegates around to find out uh, you, are, you are delegates so how do you feel about the exercise uh, are you surprised your candidate did not win but going forward what are you going to do yeah. Yeah, from you. What do you make of the exercise? Mike has been declared. Are you all going to support the candidate? Mike, I future. next time, you say you bet my day, Obe grew Abba. I bet there's opportunity. Said when you are now in your grounds of many years, you may have the next day, you know. You have a junior with two to three million for one to three million. Yeah, that get to the two to the SSMB. I also talk to Madam. Madam, good, good evening. Your life on Joy News. And then I also walk on. Oh, they all kind of say, yeah, they say, I have the same answer. So, oh, but now, so that's one year, there are four years, you may be with the soul. So, who's the way you need there? You be PM. Madam Sheila said, Oh, a very good woman. Now, so yes, I will lose so I money. I know my cook or caught three times on your mammy lawyer just of what. But you know, Pintin said, Oh, the conkon, Yammy Adum, and then one we need an interest say, Money may you manam or may you know, no, you do. So, uh, in a nutshell, to summarize what they are saying is that yes, uh, Sheila is was their candidate, they have supported her, she hasn't won, but they they believe that um, Mike is a good candidate and then they will support uh, Michael Quay uh, Jr. there. So, uh, in the long shot, you see that Mike uh, is actually in his car, uh, getting some chairs there, uh, in his V is uh, heading towards the election uh, grounds. So it's quite an electrifying atmosphere here. The, the, the win of uh, Michael Quay Jr. did not actually come as a surprise because um, the people earlier indicated that they are fed up with Sarah Joseph. I remember when I came here three days ago, the people were telling me that they needed a change. They, knew they need a new person to come and lead the, um, the MPP in this constituency because Ajua Safo has outlived her purpose. She has squandered from her duties and does not deserve to lead the, the party. So uh, everything has been um, certified here. We'll definitely share with our viewers and our online readers the certified results from the Dom Kobia. So out of the over 1,800 votes, 
Sarah Adrasafu could not even cross the 500 mark and failed. And um, what Mike Okwe Jr. has done is actually significant. And then uh, it has been seen as a, 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 a mammoth victory. It has been seen as a significant victory for the MPP and Mike Aaron Okwe. So I will hand it over back to you, uh, Benjamin and uh, Honorable Samuel Atach here in the studio to continue with the analysis. Well, thank you very much, uh, Samuel Umbro. Over a thousand votes, almost a thousand two hundred for Michael Quay Jr. With Sarah Drasafo only uh, mustering less than four hundred, a little shy of four hundred. It tells you what exactly people were looking at. I'm coming into the studio now as we get ready to wrap and hand over to uh, Evan Spencer and the rest of the team. Uh, any, any, were you in the least bit surprised? I mean, it's quite a gap. Were you in the least bit surprised? Did you expect this result? Well, it's the gap which is frightening. Uh, but the gap, uh, right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. And uh, it's also evidence of the pent-up anger of the constituency against my very good friend, Engineer Adaba, Honorable Adwa Safo. Mm. Uh, something that even she'll tell you that uh, I keep telling myself all the time. Why is it that Tatiana didn't go for the free term, you know? You know, Were you running away from a humiliating defeat? Not, not at all. Not at all. I was looking at myself and what I've done so far and my future. Because at the end of the day, there should not be a permanent job. Nobody should say that without you going to parliament, you are useless and you cannot count for society. That's a pathetic fetish we should break away from. So if you have this fetish that if I'm not a member of parliament, I have no consequence. I mean, it least might to be desired. So when you have paid your dues, and you have somewhere to go, which will also add to the, uh, your contribution to um, the progress of the nation, your family, your, your church, and God. You can comfortably exit because of the hard fact that you cannot placate the constituency permanently. I think it's common sense. All right, uh, just a few things to run by you before we, we hand over. But is, is there any way for Sarah Joasafo to find her way back into the MPP? Uh, after this loss. Is there any coming back for Sarah Adwasafo? Well, it's to show that pain is not everything, but wisdom is everything. And therefore, if you've lost, I mean, primaries, and you will not um, disown um, the one who is one. And toe to toe, foot for foot, you go into places to ensure that we break the eight. That will stand there in good stead. But if we're not careful, Pain will so rule you that you just say that our oh, MPP doesn't matter. So your advice to her would be what? Should, my advice was that you should cooperate with um, uh, my great friend and then, and then they, they give up their best and then maximize the votes because mm. that place is very consequential for MPP. That is when she will begin to count. And if there is anything which is in for her in the future, you look at her good works in the constituency. Now that she's lost. I will have rod in here. Sheila is also coming. But uh, I don't know. Takwan Swayim, of course, we all know of uh, George Merkuduka, the Deputy Minister for yes. Lands and Natural Resources. Now, 1,255 delegates voted there. Uh, can you guess how many probably would have voted for the Takwa uh, and Swayim uh, MP? Can, can you guess? Oh, I, 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 I cannot. I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to Because this is, this is a wide victory. For so him. let me tell you. Yeah, okay. As far as the vote count was concerned, a certain god in Opoku Bwating, the mm. last, got 22 votes Whoa. out of 1,255. Mm. Then Francis Ansri Eliasson got 46 votes. The remaining 1,187 went to George Mreku mm. uh, Duka. W which also brings me to Subin, where your deputy yes. appears to have Yaeno Pasa Doso. I, I, I can't believe it. Uh, my share, share, friend. I mean, you've seen a few things that oh, yeah, we probably I, haven't I, seen. I mean, can, can you share with us? Yes, I've seen a, a margin of about 631. Mm. Which is, That's in Subin. In Subin. Mm. Yeah, what, uh, and to quote you and your uh, Shakespearean powers, monumental be down. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is serious. That is serious. It's very unfortunate, but I'll say the same thing. You, you need to be, vict you need to be, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, noble in mm. your defeat. Right. And remember, what is very important is that if you are not there, this great MPP party will continue. So right. It's not a personality contest, but it's a value-driven system. People mm. should be value-oriented. 
that people are so visited with positions. Mm. Without the position, is there anything that you can do to show up the good fortunes of the new patriotic party? That's a task that everybody should look at. And we all have to embark upon this and right. help right. so that we break the age. Yeah. Well, Honorable Atacha, we are very grateful for your time with us uh, today. Pleasure, and of course, uh, your seat will give you uh, some updates on that. Akim Ibuakwa uh, South. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, Sabi Latachia will be staying with us as Evans Mensa together with Raymond Aqua, Winston Amwa take over from here and bring you the scoop. This has been uh, our continuing coverage. We'll be going all the way till 7 p.m. Uh, this is your election headquarters and is brought to you by Petrosol Clean Fuel in full quantity. So stay with us. More results to be declared right here on your election headquarters. We'll be right back. 86 votes. That was expected because she was not actually part of the race. Initially, many people thought that, yes.